Next thing, again, that adds to how slow this game is. You can't plate well sprinting. I cannot stress enough how annoying and unnecessary this change is. Keep all your not being able to slide cancel changes that you made, whatever, I don't care. The fact that I can't plate while sprinting pisses me off more than that, actually. Because you can't get away from a gunfight. What am I supposed to do if I'm one shot? Nothing. You don't have time to plate. You have to literally just keep running and then get somewhere and try to just chow the guy. You cannot armor up as someone's chasing you, shooting at you. There's nothing you can do. There's zero outplay potential there. You need to make it such a simple thing. We've always had it. Make it so I can sprint and plate up. Pretty sure in real life, if you're trying to get realism, you can shove a plate in while moving faster than a slow walk. Change it. Activision devs do not play their own game. It's not your dad. Your dad doesn't support you. You should know. You worked at a coffee shop, you stupid bitch. My name is Casey and absolutely not fucking Tanner because my parents don't hate me that much. Hey, did they have just eight patches lined up, but they just didn't release them because they were on break? No, you moron kids. Then we'll of course get into it. Change your fucking name and get scammed. He's not, he's feeling under the I weather. I probably won't say another word until stay humble. So have a good pod, Raz. I'll Got be it. here listening. Got it. We are live. Welcome, pigs, to Drop Shot of Call of Duty podcast, episode number 281. My name is Casey, also known as Razanon. I am joined once again by this dumb shit, Tanner. What's up? Hey, what are you doing? Walking out of the room or what? Oh, no. I need cool. to. I need to wipe my lips. I'm going to apply some Carmex. By the way, Carmex is the best, unironically, chapstick in the game. I was running regular chapstick huh. in my loadout. Just dog shit, whatever I had. And it wasn't working. Like, it would feel fine when it was on. And then the next day or whatever, wake up, dog shit, trash, chapped lips again. I'm fucking chugging water, by the way. It doesn't matter. So I'm like, cool, I'm going to get Carmex. Maybe that'll work. It's popular. And it does. I Like, dude, I put it on when I go to sleep. Wake up. Perfect lips, dude. Model mm. model style lips. It actually it. works. It'll like well, Carmex is like industrial grade chapstick, essentially. Yeah, that's the... Yeah, exactly. You might clean with like lemon pledge every once in a while, but when you need to get active, you get the fucking bleach out, you know? Mm -hmm. Carmex is the lip bleach in in a good way. That's probably, hopefully not toxic like bleach uh, is, so. Yeah. Anyways, that's what I was doing. Welcome to the show. Cool. Uh, today, we are not talking about Chapstick. We are talking about Call of Duty Warzone 2.0. Is it called 2.0? Warzone like, 2.0. Is that what they actually call it? Let me open up Battle.net here real quick. I really do believe that is what they call it. That's kind of insane, isn't it? Warzone 2.0, yeah. Let's it's just a little call insane. it 2, right? Because 2.0 2 implies yeah. there's going to be a 2.1, etc., which there won't be. Well, maybe by the time the game works, it'll be like Warzone. They'll just call it Warzone 3.0. Maybe this is the 2.0 beta. We're in the alpha stages, man. So we're getting once it's fully released, we'll, it'll be Warzone 3.0. That hopefully in eight months or so. That's not true, but hopefully it is. You know, so yeah. Anyway. Surely. Welcome to the show. Um, so today, yeah, as we're talking about Warzone 2.0, uh, if you're a new frog, new listener, we have timestamps so you can skip to whatever section you want as a little PSA for you. Um, and before we get into it, a few announcements, just one for me, actually, uh, is this. So we got some new weapons and I've been doing the camo grind, continuing the camo grind, um, intermittently between gaming, playing Warzone, playing DMZ. So I got the... Signal, the MCP QR STUV, the Lab LAB 330, and the new sniper, the Victus 
whatever the fuck gold. That's four gold sniper rifles. Okay. And then I just looked out of curiosity and I was like, mm. in th even though I haven't gotten the SPX 80, which the game launched with gold, it was still four gold snipers. And for the platinum challenges, for the signal, for example, it says you need four gold snipers to unlock the platinum challenge to be able to start going for long shots. However, when I hover over platinum, it's still locked. And it says I've only done three out of four snipers, even mm. though I've gotten the Victus gold. So now I'm not so sure that you can get polyatomic without doing launchers. And everyone keeps saying that, but that's what I was saying last time. I don't think anyone's actually literally tested it and has mm -hmm. confirmed it. Everyone's just assuming based on what the writing was. Or that's just bug, because I've been hearing a lot lately. Even people in our Discord keep saying that like weapon challenges are bugged for them. Like they'll complete a challenge and it won't unlock the next one. But maybe that's because they were doing the new guns or something. Interesting. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. so that could have all been bait. So just keep that in mind. I don't know what the deal is there, but yeah, I was I I was gonna do all five snipers anyway, because hopefully Surely. if I do all five of them gold, it will unlock platinum, and then in theory, getting the Victus platinum will be an extra one. But maybe it won't be. Maybe I wasted my time doing it. I don't know. Let us know. But I will let you know. But yeah, there's a little PSA for you. I'm not so sure about our polyatomic PSA that we had last time. Now, this this uh, has shaken me. But anyway, mm. other than that, uh, do you have any other announcements, Tanner? No. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'll also be on Aussie Menace's first person creator showcase podcast tonight, 7 p.m. So if you want to listen mm, to that seven, live, huh? you can uh, you can pop in and do that. I will make an announcement in Discord. I won't tag anyone, but I'll make an announcement with a link if you're around 7 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, and then you can, yeah, go to his Twitter and uh, or their Twitter, Twitch. FBCS oh. podcast, and find a link. I don't know. I don't know if he made a new Twitch for his thing or not. So it might be at Aussie Menace. But if you want to listen to it later, you can figure it out. Just go to my Twitter and I'll retweet something. So anyway, uh, that should be fun and exciting. Okay, so now we're today we're doing as as uh, we've been talking about Warzone Two first impressions. There's been quite a few games of Warzone we've played uh, in preparation for this episode. So sometimes when we do first impressions eps, it's like the next day. So we will play for like four hours, three hours, and then do a first impressions episode. If it's Spec Ops, we'll play for an hour and then do a first impressions episode. <laughs> 30 that's minutes, all I yeah. can stomach. Um, but in this case, we played quite a bit before this first impressions episode. Um, so we've... So that... I mean, there's your kind of... Um, to give you a sense of how much we've played, what we've been doing, and where these impressions stem from. I don't know how many hours we've played. Tanner's played a bit more than I have, but quite a few upward of 10 um i've sniped and i've also not sniped uh there are a lot of things i haven't done yet i haven't tried a shotgun i've used an smg very little although i do we will talk about that um so that's kind of where we're coming from on this episode and I will also add, we have played some DMZ. We've unlocked the M12 beta. Um, M13 beta, excuse me. Uh, I didn't mean to say 12. I don't know why I did. That was weird. And I'm old and dying. I'm 30 years old. So, uh, yeah, yeah we, we, did, we own the M13 and you don't. And that makes me laugh. Um, <laughs> Because we're better than you, obviously. Uh, it's first easy. try, we got it. First, unironically, first try. Um, but yeah, we played some DMZ as well. So I, that all that is to say, we will do some DMZ content soon. I don't know when or where, but we'll be talking about DMZ. I'll say this quickly. DMZ was a lot more fun than I expected it to be. Yeah, same. And the actual players who play DMZ, 
this is not an exaggeration, at least so far, are the worst first person shooter players I've ever seen in a video game in my life. And I'm not kidding. Yeah. Like imagine a plunder level player, divide it by five. That's how bad every person we've seen in DMZ <laughs> is so far. I mean, awful. So unaware, don't know what's going on, can't shoot. There was a time, in fact, and this is every single one. We haven't seen a decent DMZ player. We've mm -hmm. killed how many teams in DMZ have we killed? Not that many, to be fair. We've killed no, eight teams, maybe. No, there's not a ton of PvP, yeah. But all eight teams were all comprised of three utter dog shit players. The likes of which I'm not exaggerating, I've literally never seen before. The worst, most just irredeemably bad players I've ever seen. It was yeah. very weird. One time, we were coming into zone, getting shot at, and I thought it was a bot. I literally thought they were bots. And then Tanner downs one, he's like, oh, I think these are real players. He was missing so many bullets and just standing in the middle of the street shooting me. <laughs> yeah. I was so confused and I didn't care because I thought it was a bot, so I didn't feel like I was in any danger. And I wasn't in any danger, by the way, even though it was a real player, because he was so bad. But I mean, just bot behavior. So then we dunked on them, of course. Uh, but we've had more fun playing DMZ than I expected to. Not because the, the players um, are shit. I had f I've been having fun in DMZ despite the PvP at all, honestly. You know. Yeah, it's because it's something new and different. Everything we said about it still holds true. There is no reason to play it. And... Just like we had talked about with the loot, it's like, okay, there's a tub of, there's a bottle of toothpaste here that's worth $100. Why would I pick that up when next to it there's just a stack of $500? What's right. the reason for me to pick up this toothpaste? So, like, everything we said about it is absolutely true. That being said, will it be fun for a few hours? Yeah, for sure. But, um... You are not exaggerating. The AI actually is a bigger threat, and that's not a joke. I'm not trying to be mean to the player base of DMZ. The AI is a much bigger threat than every player we've ran into. Because when you come across the AI, if you're driving in a car and you like drive by a stronghold, there will be 30 AI shooting at you. You're gonna die. I've been downed probably eight times in DMZ just because we like run around and you know don't try hard, just run out in the open, and start shooting AI. Every single time I've been down, it's to an AI. I don't think a player has downed me yet. They're yeah, awful. Same. They're, They're the so worst. bad. They're the worst. So players. if you want to feel like you're the best Call of Duty player in the world, go play DMZ and look for players because you'll win every gunfight, probably. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know why they're so fucking bad. It's just got to be like Ground War where there's like no skill based matchmaking. I guess all the good players are playing Warzone too, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think it's a and the only players. Of those things. Only the sweaty kids, the only sweaty kids in DMZ are just trying to go for the M13 right away and get and that done. And, and, and most stuff. of the kids that are sweaty have probably already gotten it by this point. Yeah. So now it's just burger bots. Yeah. Completely awful players. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, one thing about DMZ as well is the, oh, dude, when we killed those guys in the boat. God, that was funny. It's fucking funny because they're so bad. You, and there's prox chat. You can grief the fuck out of them. There's a contract in DMZ where you get in a little boat and then you have to take the boat to a different area. And while you're driving it, you're getting uh, hunted by an AI Apache. That is an actual threat, by the way. Um, yeah, busted OP. So we were going to an exfil, me, Tanner, and Pop. And we saw a boat with an Apache shooting at it. So we knew they were players and they were on that contract. And we, and we were in our own little dinghy and we were like, all right, let's go. So we got real close to them. Prox chatted the fuck out of them, killed all of them. And yeah. we were like, contract failed. Contract failed in Prox chat. <laughs> God, it was toxic. <laughs> it was so fucking funny, dude. Yeah. Uh, real, they were real, terrible. real pieces of shit in DMZ. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. anyway, yeah. Uh, one thing about DMZ too, you'll get a billion weapon XP. A lot but of if you can find XP. a gun you haven't leveled yet. Pick, just pick it up and you get like 10 levels for just yeah. like picking it up right and then if you reload it'll be max level and you'll have two <laughs> of the base camos done I mean it's absurd XP yeah but that's the case for Warzone too um I was holding an LMG I hadn't used yet or no I had used it a little bit but it went from I was simply holding a roll 
and mm. we finished uh, a contract. I don't remember what what one, and it went from level two to level four, and change. So I saw like level three, level four, and I I was I didn't do anything. Like I wasn't Jesus. even the one that completed the contract. Some guy on my team, whatever, picked up the fucking yeah. box. I and then as long as you're on yeah. the same team you all get the xp for it no matter what as long as the weapon's in your hands so yeah, yeah. that it's it's a really gross way to, dmz and warzone are really gross for weapon xp right now yeah so something to keep in mind just do contracts and you'll uh you'll fly through them but in dmz it's harder to pick what weapon you want to level you could take in anything but it's an insured slot you won't die unless they, you're a yeah. fucking idiot though so it should shouldn't be a problem it, it's it's a pretty fucking fast way to level guns yeah yeah the ai only have like literally four different guns though that's the only issue but if you go yeah. to buy stations you can buy like standard contraband guns so like you'll buy a base lmg that maybe you haven't leveled up just run around with that kill ai do uh you know do contracts or whatever and you'll get a shitload of xp extract you'll have it again the next raid yeah really quick really quick easy way to do it yeah definitely so um all right other than that anyway uh no more announcements here so we're gonna get into this warzone 2 first impressions so we're starting with the good you said tanner yeah okay starting with the good and then so yeah that's how we've broken this up we're gonna talk about the good things of warzone 2 then we're gonna talk about the bad things uh psa these are first impressions. They are subject to change. They will change, yeah. Also, there's going to be more bad to say about good than good. Surely. Because when we're talking about what things are good, it's really... It's good because we it's better than we expected, or it's better than Warzone 1. That's what good means. It's not just good in general. But if we're talking about something bad in the game, we do mean bad in general. So obviously there's going to be more things that are bad to talk about than good. Because we're not going to sit here and say, oh, the guns fire bullets. That's a good thing. For sure, yeah. Like, I'm glad that happens. But I'm not talking guns, about... Yeah, guns fire bullets. Like, most of the game is good. I, that's why we play it. But we're, yeah, we're talking oh. about exceptionally good things. Um. So, anyway, yeah. Uh, Alright, so starting with the good. What do we got here, pig? Uh, best thing about the game right now, hands down, Prox Chat. It is making the game. It is huge fun. It's fantastic. Um, could even that use some work? Yeah, of course it could. The directional on it's not very good, but the fact that it exists simply shocks me that Activision added this in, knowing how toxic everyone would be. And boy, it, it is toxic, and uh, it's it's. It's very funny and it really does make the game. If you have a game where no one's voiping ever and you're trying to shit talk people and have some fun and no one talks back, boy, it's all pretty damn boring, man. But when you get those games where people are voiping nonstop, you start third parting people that were already shit talking, then you come in shit talking them. It is a lot, a lot of fun. Um, and I think there's a lot of interesting things you can do with it that I want to try doing. I've seen videos of guys that are like, one guy was the last person left on a squad, and they essentially took the guy hostage. They're like, drop your guns, we're not going to kill you. And they made him like run around with them <laughs> with no guns That's out fantastic. and just like held them as a hostage. So there's a lot of funny things you can do yeah. with it. You can team up with the assimilation shit. Um, but it's it's excellent. Uh, I, went, I was on record months ago saying when this was first leaked that uh, COD was getting prox chat. I was like, no, it won't. Activision would never do that, knowing how toxic it is. Well, they did it, and it is very, very, very toxic, and I love it. It's surprisingly Excellent. less toxic than I expected, to be honest, though. It's toxic for me, though, because I come in hot, I guess. If if you just like go in and be like, hey, guys, what's up? No one's going to be toxic, but I come in saying, where you at, you little fucking bitch? I'm going to kill you and your team. So it's toxic for me, yeah. I guess what I mean to say is, yeah, because you're right, yeah. Um... It's not as TOS as I expected it to no. be. No. There There's are, gamer words and stuff, but not as, yeah, not as many. There are some people throwing around the <laughs> spam, for sure. The TOS yeah, that words, does for sure. But it's rarer than I thought. A lot of it is just, like, bog-standard, acceptable shit talk. Because you're not going to get banned. Like, it's not against the terms of service to say, like, oh, you're dog shit, kid. Get farted on. That's, like, fun. Like, it's rude, maybe, but... Like, you won't get banned for it. That's okay. They've been on record saying this. We've never covered it, but they've been on record like, yeah, it's like, it's fine to trash talk. You just can't 
use fucking like racial epithets or something yeah which is which is a good standard for them to have to be fair exactly yeah so um but yeah it's been a lot of fun uh it prox chat does not work as well as a game like tarkov for example where you can tell where someone is and how far they are depending on how loud the audio is and where it's coming from let me be super clear this prox chat in this game will never be directional it's never getting better than this yeah exactly this is something that will never happen it's going to be a binary either you hear them or you don't and it's never going to change it's not going to be directional the volume isn't going to change based on how far they are from you they can't do that for footsteps of course they can't do it for prox chat there's there is not yeah. a chance in hell that is ever happening so if you're holding out hope that prox chat is going to get better it won't um it absolutely won't this is they probably think it it works fine and they don't even they're not even considering that it should be you know changed based on how close they are or whatever it'll never happen yeah it's not even on their radar which i guess yeah. is fine and I, I think i don't think that's a huge deal in this game honestly most cod players honestly probably haven't played games with prox chat in them um like even h1z1 the game's like is like 10 years old that game had a way better quality of prox chat in terms of determining where the person was what floor they were on in a building like exactly where they were this is just okay i hear this guy he's somewhere in my area um the vertical audio part of it seems to not matter so i could be on the roof of a high rise and he can be on the ground level and i still hear him like he's next to me so the directional audio itself is fucking horrible of course but the feature is fantastic but compared to other games with prox chat it is much worse in terms of just the overall quality of it but it doesn't really matter it's cod it makes it fun um and yeah yeah when i say toxic by the way i'm not saying i'm not condoning kids running around yelling fucking racial slurs i mean people like shit talking yeah, of course, as yeah. you're interrogating and whatnot just so we're super clear so no one thinks i'm i want people you know running around fucking yelling this is why Game Tanner Wars. doesn't like to stream Warzone, by the way, is because he's lying right now. Yeah, and if, and when yeah, he's surely. off stream, you, boy, you guys should hear the things that come out of his mouth. So, yeah, and that's a joke, sure. by the way. Relax. Surely. Racism is cringe and retarded. Anyways, um, moving on. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the prox chat not being like, like if the pro <laughs> if this prox chat was in Tarkov, I would turn off Tarkov prox chat. Oh, you, no one would use it. Yeah. yeah. It would just harm you because you wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. Like in, in Tarkov, if I'm in dorms, I can tell what room the guy's in. I can be like, okay, based on this audio, he's in the third or fourth room on the left of two story. Right. Yeah. Like this game, it's like, eh, there's a guy somewhere. You you have no idea. Yeah. But in this but game, it's God. yeah, my point was though that in this game, it just doesn't matter as much. Yeah. There are, you know, like in Tarkov, it yeah, it would matter a lot more if the pro. It, it needs to be good in Tarkov, in other words. In this game, it doesn't really need to be directional, I should say. It'd be better if it was in this game, but I don't think it's a huge issue. So anyway, yeah, it's a lot of fun, uh, as expected. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, next up here, this one will probably change a lot, by the way. But as of right now, overall, the weapon balance seems pretty solid. Um much like they are in multiplayer smgs are not very good at range it's not like it doesn't seem like you can build like an mp7 like you could in warzone 1 and like actually kill people easily from like 50 to 70 meters with an iron sight mp7 you can't do that in this game smgs shred up close they're very very good but they're good at one thing and that's that and it's the same thing with ars ars you're not going to win all the gunfights up close because you're going to get killed by the sprint to fire if you're going up against an SMG or something. But they're good at 40 to 50 meters while also not being so easy to control that you can like easily beam people off a head glitch at 100 meters like you would all day long on Caldera and Rebirth. Um, so I think that's overall pretty good. When it comes to the sniper balance, I still don't know how I think about it um pretty much no sniper one shots at any range i think at the very least they need to change it so like all of the actual sniper rifles in the sniper rifle category they need to at least one shot down within like 40 50 30 meters something it just doesn't make any sense that a guy can be afk this happened the other day y yesterday this guy was afk standing there he lagged out or something i'm 15 meters away shooting him in the head with my sniper hit marker 
the guy's just standing still. That should be a one shot Shit down on, at that yeah. range. That should not require two headshots. If you're going to require it at range, okay, I get it. It is frustrating getting one shot down uh, for, you know, from a sniper in the middle of nowhere. But I don't know that... I think you need some changes to be made there. Haven't fully made up my mind. Um, I think you're yeah. probably right. Yeah. Like they need to have some sort of in between because now they're just like, I still use them because they're good, but it's like, dude, with the MCPR, it often takes three shots to the chest at range to kill someone. So it's a little, it's a little rough, but then the balance is good in that way also because at that distance i wouldn't be beaming someone easily with an ar so i'm still choosing to use that sniper even though it's not a one shot down so You're i think that's where more damage with the sniper. yeah yeah so i, I think that's kind of where you can come in and say like the overall balance is okay as of now i yeah i think i think i'm actually on board with how the snipers are right now honestly um because a headshot with a sniper will get you to literally one hp like literally one health point so all you have to do at that point is is fart on them and they'll be down i think that's probably fine um because because i'm trying to imagine if snipers could one shot headshot at any range would anyone not be sniping like i don't think there would be a reason to not snipe at that point yeah and then you would just lose the variety because how it is now there is absolutely a reason to snipe because ARs have enough recoil, which I strongly commend Activision and Infinity War, Infinity Ward, I guess, for doing. I strongly commend them. There's a reason to snipe because ARs have recoil, but it's not so dominant that everyone's going to snipe. I think yeah. this is actually fine. However, where I agree with Tanner is there should be some range at which a headshot with a sniper downs you even if you have three plates in full health, like 30 yeah. meters or so 40, maybe, or you could make it dependent on the gun. Like, um, like we had in Warzone one, I think that would be better because here's the thing. If I'm using quite literally any sniper rifle in this game at 30 meters and I try to get a headshot and I'm being shot, I will never hit it. There's yeah, way too flinch. much flinch. So the only way I'm hitting a 30 meter headshot with a sniper um, is if I'm not getting shot. Like literally, the flinch is a lot, which is fine. I'm happy with the amount of flinch um, for now, anyway. Uh, but you could, but because that flinch exists, I think there should be some range where you can one shot headshot. I just don't think it's that big of a deal. Yeah. But. You know, as we play more, as I said, this is all subject to change. But I, I yeah, I, I like where snipers are at in this game right now. Um, and some of you might be thinking, oh, well, why did you hate how snipers were in Warzone 1? Because now they're even worse. It's like, well, on paper, they're worse because they can't one shot headshot at any range. But actually, no, they're not because unlike Warzone 1, not every single AR is landing every single bullet on me with a 6x scope from unironically 120 meters. So yeah. the landscape is different. ARs have much different recoil now. So yeah, snipers are actually better even if on paper they appear worse. Um uh yeah, um and that all I you can also frame it this way. If I see someone at 150 meters and they have an AR or an LMG, and I have a sniper, I would much rather have the sniper in that situation. Every single time. Every single time. And in fact, this has happened. Uh, I'm sniping, the other guy isn't. I see him at 150 meters, and he doesn't even try shooting back, because he knows he can't. So he's just running away, trying to get to cover. Sometimes I kill him, sometimes I don't. But that's the advantage of using a sniper. Yeah. Is that it's like he, the, the guy is thinking, oh, he's so far away. I don't even have a chance of hitting a shot. I'm just going to run. And then the other thing is with uh, with the plating system, which we'll get to. Don't oh, worry. Yeah. Um, if you hit someone and you hit them in the head so that they're basically one shot, if they start running away, 
if they start plating, they're going to be walking, and it's an easy yeah. follow-up yeah. shot. You can shoot them in the leg, and they're dead. True. Uh, and if they don't, then they're just going to run away and not try plating, and they're still going to be one shot, and you can hit a follow-up shot. So I think that's also why they're good um, True. because of that that's a good terrible point. feature that we'll get into. That's a great point, actually. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. The only concern and I have about snipers stems. is solos, which I haven't played and won't. Um but I wonder how viable sniping is in solos because if you're playing like quads, being able to get someone to one HP is really good because you have three other guns. Maybe someone's using an AR. It's like, yeah, you're not going to be beaming this guy from 150 meters that I just hit, but literally hit him once, please. And that's not hard. Like they'll be able to hit him once. So that makes sniping a lot better. But if you're playing solos, do you snipe? Is that better than just using an AR and closing the distance? I don't know. Um, sniping seems like it would be worse in solos than in quads because you never have the opportunity to one-shot kill someone unless they haven't found a vest yet. Yeah. I don't know what to think of that situation because I haven't played solos. So, But I am curious. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. We'll learn more about I think it would still be good. I don't know. I'll have yeah. to think about that more and see people. And any, if any of you listening snipe in solos, let us know how it's working out for you. And I've how heard you're solos are playing that. pretty fun on this map and everything. Yeah. Because I, what I would think is, yeah, I don't know what you would do. Because I was going to say, like, you could run, like, an AR with a lot of velocity as a secondary so that you could, like, land a headshot and then just switch and, like, finish. But then it's like, but then you're super fucked up close if you're building like a velocity AR. That's not really an option. So I don't yeah. know. I don't know how you handle that. It's interesting. I guess you just have to hit the follow up. But anyway, something to think about. Let's hit the follow up. Uh, I have not used SMGs much and I like that they have a very steep damage range drop off. But on the one kill that I can think of right now that I got with an SMG, it was at 25 meters. Boy, it took a lot of bullets. A lot. A lot of bullets. Uh, you I like that was? I can't like fart on someone at 40 meters with a an MP7. But we might have gone a little overboard. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. Because SMGs don't underperform inside of 10 meters. They're, they fuck. They will delete you, for sure. Yeah, Which exactly. they definitely should do. But how far should that damage range go out? I don't know. But they are very significantly worse outside of that first damage range. Like, insanely. I was shocked how many bullets I had to land to get it down with a Vaznev. Um, at, yeah, again, 25 meters probably. Uh, yeah. I don't know if that's too much or fine. I don't know where I stand on that yet, but it's something I'm keeping my eye on. Yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think that's how they're balanced well, though, because you're right there. Then when you get up close, you're like insta dead. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not saying it's necessarily bad. It's just I'm I was I was just surprised how many bullets I had to land. I was like, yeah. Jesus Christ. But uh, yeah, maybe that's fine. I don't know. We'll uh, we'll let you guys know. So anyway, moving on. Uh, next thing here. So this has been the hot topic with everyone is the map. Uh, the map to me seems good. So here's what I'll say. It is hard to judge this early. Um, I really liked Caldera at the start for the reason that I always said it looked cool and was a really interesting setting for a game. Um, that was my biggest thing. As I never said early on, like, oh, Caldera is an excellent map. I was like, okay, it's interesting, it's different, it feels like somewhere, it feels like alive and where people live. Uh, and that was kind of like my initial impressions on that. My initial impression for Almazra is, it strikes me as like the most basic Battle Royale map you can design, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, it just, everything again kind of looks so similar, like nothing really stands out. Like, Verdant seemed to have so many POIs that felt so much different when you got into those areas. Like, Almazra and Caldera, same thing. It's like, it all just kind of blends together, and, like, nothing feels that different. And, like, the big POIs that are, 
like very different just aren't interesting like ronin oil or something it's like i don't want to fight at a flat oil field like it's it, they're just boring to fight in um so i think overall it is a good map and it plays well and i'll learn to like really love it but it's just like the most basic br map you can imagine is kind of what it seems like um Another thing, Observatory, which is the new peak, it's the high point in the middle of the map. It's essentially just a way better designed version of peak, which is good. It's more accessible. There's roads. There's hiking trails going up to it. There's various little paths. You can run up the side yeah. of the mountain in this game better. Um, there's rocks you can actually mantle over and climb up. So overall, getting up to it is not a problem. And the biggest thing is, is with peak on Caldera, it was like on most sides of it, it was just flat open area. And then you had to try to run around it and get up to peak. But now you get up to these certain levels, like on, I know like on the West side of the map and there's other like buildings and like a little town below the highest point, like halfway up observatory, like off the road, there's a little town. So there's other little POIs on the way up there that you can stop and loot, get cover in in case you start getting shot at and stuff. So it's a way, way better designed version of peak. It does does go to show you it's totally fine to have like a high point in the middle of the map if they design it well. And I do think they did that. So um, this does fe this feels like a PUBG map, though, to me it feels really like a PUBG map, like from the color scheme, the way it's designed, the POIs, it strikes me. As it, it, it just reminds me that I'm like playing PUBG. That's what I think when I play Warzone. So, and they, I think, generally make good uh, battle royale maps. So I'm liking it. Um, just kind of, I don't know. It all looks kind of dull to me. A little yeah. boring looking, boring on the eyes because it all blends in together. I know. What no you mean. real distinct POIs. Yeah, I think that's true. I think aesthetically, Caldera was a lot more was a lot better. It was a lot more interesting and had variety. There were like. I think the thing about Caldera that it had that Verdansk and Almazra do not is that it had POIs that were military POIs, which all three maps had. But also, it had like civilian POIs, which only Caldera had. So there was the yeah. capital. It was full of like buildings and houses, and there was a resort, and there was a pool, and there was a fucking out outdoor bar. And it was, it felt like you said, like a, like somewhere where people like lived on Verdansk, yeah. there were random houses just in the middle of nowhere underneath a military base. Like it didn't yeah, even didn't make, make sense. sense. You're right. Who yeah. would live there? The, these places actually don't exist in real life. There are no shacks that some guy lives in fucking 500 meters outside of Pendleton like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's restricted area. You're not allowed to live there. There are like residential areas and then there are fucking military areas. Now this could have to do with the crazy zoning laws we have in the United States, the best country on earth. I know in Europe you can you can walk past some guy's house and then a coffee shop and then a grocery store and then an apartment complex all on the same street, which I think is actually kind of cool. That's not possible in the United States. There are strict zoning laws. This is a residential area. There are only houses here. You're not allowed to build anything else. Um, but with that said, in Russia, where Verdansk was or wherever the fuck, the fake Russia, the, the made up Russian country, I don't know where it was. I don't care. I very strongly doubt there is quite literally a military base. And then a kilometer away, there is a shack or some house, some little two story house that's like 10 square feet with no other houses around that some guy just lives in. I don't believe that's true. So it felt just weird. Like, so weird that you don't even think about it, you know? But Caldera did feel like a real place. Almazra, all military shit again. Yeah. I don't know if there are houses. Maybe there are, actually. Never really thought about it. Well, I don't it. think it's mil- I don't even think of it as military. Well, just, it all, like, looks the same. I mean, most of it's not military. Serif Bay, Syed, it's all, like, actually apartments and shit, There's mostly. The fortress, yeah. So that's military, but yeah, I guess you're right. Most of I it isn't been in the military. Fortress yet in BR. But yeah, it, it just kind of all looks the same. But I think overall, it's probably going to be the best designed BR map that we've had yet. It's just like all I'm saying is like aesthetically, it's just kind of dull and ugly. But um, yeah, I guess you're right. It's not all the, military. The design yeah. of it's good. Like the from open areas to houses and whatnot, I think there's a good balance there. That's what I, I'll say. 
I agree. Yeah, the much more important point for both of us is how it functions. And I think this map does function exceptionally well. Yeah. It is not as flat as Verdansk, but it's not as hilly as Caldera. It's a nice mix, which I like. It is. Solid mix. And the high point, which is going to be a very important POI, the most important one, Observatory, is it's high, but it's not it's not like completely defensible like Peak was. Like if you controlled the top of Peak, you're kind of ne never coming off. A like, good luck. And you can jump off Peak and go anywhere on the map. You can jump off Observatory, but you can't get to the corners of the map like you could on Caldera. I mean, you yeah. can go anywhere on Caldera basically. Yeah, exactly. And also like the the hills on this map make sense. Caldera, it would just be massive hill flat for. 200 meters massive hill like none of it actually made sense it was just very like poorly thought out this actually feels like where the hills are like the gradual inclines and whatnot actually makes sense as that you like get closer to the middle of the map and it goes up by observatory and whatnot and then when you get to like almazra city and other pois on that side of the map it's all flat and it's like an oil field and that whole area is flat there's not just unnecessary mountains and hills everywhere so the design is good just kind of a little dull looking need some more color or something yeah mm-hmm yeah, I agree. I think it's a super well designed. Um, it does feel bigger than any map we've ever played. I'm yeah, sure someone it, knows it, is. it actually it actually is. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, they, I think we yeah, talked about that. They said actually. that months ago. It, it is the big, biggest BR map they've yeah. ever made. Yeah. Which I think is probably fine. We'll get more into that. But yeah, it seems really good. Uh, it seems very well designed. I think yeah. Observatory especially. Tanner paid special attention to that, and I think he's right to do that, because the tallest point on the map is going to be probably the most visited and the most important one to do well. And I think Observatory is done super well. It's not, yeah. like, utterly defensible. And there's nowhere... Yeah. It's nothing like Prison, where you just can't take it if a good team is up there. You can't. Now, luckily, Prison wasn't in the center of the map, so it wasn't that big of a deal. But Peak... Well, they artificially changed where Circles land ended, so that didn't end up being that big of a deal either. But again, if there's a really good team on top of Peak, you're not taking it. It's not possible to. It's yeah. too defensible. But on Observatory, I don't think an area like that exists. There are no insanely high rooftops. Um, and the tallest roofs, there are multiple buildings that have that elevation. So you just go to another one. So, like, it does seem really well designed. Um, and it's fun to fight there, too, at Observatory proper. Uh, there yeah. are a lot of good fights there that are a lot of fun. So, yeah, I think it's really well designed. And I, I enjoy how it's how it plays uh, quite a bit. So, yeah, Another it seems like the two hot spots are Observatory and Almazra City. Those are the two hot drops yeah. so far on the map. Yeah. Mm -hmm. High rise specifically. <laughs> Get, yeah, like 20 people landing high rise every game. Yeah. Another point I just thought of, so I'll mention it now. Uh, this is a fairly important point. The circles, the starting circles, have been pretty good. Uh, they have not been caldera circles, where 90% of the, the circle, the first circle, is in the ocean or out of the map. <laughs> yeah. Uh, every game. That is not, in my experience, all the circles have been 80% plus playable area. Which is Default. great. Which is great. Yeah. And I think they have to do that because if they want to split it into three separate circles, there needs to be a significant amount of playable area for that to even be possible. So they kind of are forced to give you a bunch of play space in the first circle, which is good. That's probably also why all these games feel awfully slow to everyone is because unlike Caldera, it's not forcing all the lobby into a very small play space even though each first circle is technically the same size. It's not actually, because the first circle, if 90% of it is in the water, well, that's a 10% smaller circle. The entire lobby is going to go there. Of course it's going to feel hot as fuck um, every game. But if you have actual circles that make sense, then people can go anywhere in the circle, because all of it's playable, and then the early game is going to feel a little slower because people aren't going to be super concentrated. It's probably why the game... That's one of the reasons the games probably feel a lot slower than, like, Caldera does or did. Yeah. Um, so something to keep that's in true. mind. But in the long run, it's better that the first circle, I can land in it. Like, that's probably a good thing. So I'll take it. Uh, another thing about this map, 
Climbing works. Um, climbing works well. If you're going up observatory, you can actually mantle most of the rocks you would want to with very little issue. Um, on top of that, I have not run into ledge hanging being super cringe as often as I expected to, which is good. Um, I haven't died because I'm ledge hanging when I wanted to just insta mantle uh, yet. Now it will happen, and the mechanic is still dog shit. But luckily, yeah. it has not been as much of an issue as I expected it to be, uh, or as often. And I can I can say the same about water as well. Um, I've not died to water uh, yet, so that's yeah. good also. Probably yeah. because when it comes to the mantling thing. That's probably because um, you're not even mantling, climbing over things. Like, I'm just running around walls. I'm not even going to try jumping over them. So it, it hasn't been an issue for me because I feel like we know better than to even try it. So I just run around instead of having to mantle that. And if it's like a rock face or something, the animation seems to go a lot quicker. And like you're usually climbing a rock face going up to observatory or something. So you're not getting shot at. It's not going to necessarily get you killed um, but when it comes to like jumping over a wall to a backyard I'm just never going to do it I'm going to run around if if I'm fighting someone that's there I'm not going to do that Um, actually yesterday I got an easy easy kill on a guy it was when Jake and I were like 2v3 in a house being pushed and I was laying prone and this guy jumped up to the window and he started mantle climbing over the window and as he was stuck in like the animation it like almost bugged out and it looked like he was just standing still and I just got an easy kill on him. And I know he died because of that animation fucking him over. So yeah. you just got to know better and play around that. Honestly, it's a terrible implementation of how they did the mantling and ledge hanging unnecessary to no one's ever actually going to use ledge hanging and use it seriously for any reason. So it was a waste. It's just a bad thing, but you learn to kind of, you, you know, play around it. Mm hmm. Uh, and then as you just said about like the water, yeah, the water overall uh, is a non-issue. Um, I forgot that like the entire south and southwest part of the map is water. Uh, and it doesn't matter because the zone doesn't end on the edge of the map down there. So there's no like boat fights or anything ever. But you can, I mean, you can go all the way around from north of airport all the way down to the southeast part of the map, all the way along the south to the southwest corner, and then go up like basically halfway into the map up to quarry and you can be in water that whole time, but it just doesn't, doesn't really seem to matter. And when it comes to like the rivers and stuff going through all monster city, again, takes three seconds, five seconds to swim across. It doesn't really matter if you're being shot at, obviously don't swim across right there. You know, use your brain, go somewhere else. Don't cross the river. Uh, hasn't been a big issue at all though. Yeah, there is shit hit reg in the water. That's one thing I will say. True. If you see someone's body in the hit in the, water and you try shooting at it like one out of four bullets are Remember you it's and me were both really trying to up. kill some guy in the water yep and, and we, we were, were sniping like, too yeah and we were sniping and i was aiming at like his head that was out of the water the whole time and like finally after both of us probably firing a combined six shots or something with Actually, our bolt action rifles yeah. we downed the guy yeah yeah that was weird so but yeah overall not a big deal i agree with you yeah so that's good. Um, let's see, where were we next here? Uh, okay, so when it comes to the AI, I think the placement's good. It's definitely much improved from what we saw at COD Next, where they were definitely all over the place. Or I swear, at COD Next, they were like, every stronghold was always up or something. So in this game, there's usually between... I've seen, I think, three... Anywhere from two to four strongholds at a time. I don't know if it's a set number or if they like just disappear on the UI at times because the UI is all completely bugged. Uh, but it doesn't seem to always be a set number of strongholds. But the AI placement is good because they are absolutely only at the strongholds and nowhere else. So they are not an issue unless you want to go to a stronghold and fight them. Even then, if you like run by uh, across the street from a stronghold and they're on the outside guarding it, they're not going to shoot at you unless you shoot at them first or if you get super close to them. So you can just completely avoid it if you don't want to hit the stronghold. Um, and I, I do now like the idea of strongholds giving you a chance to get a loadout early. And the more I've been playing Warzone, the more I'm realizing that's like a necessary strategy to do. You kind of have to go to a stronghold, I think, because the chance of you getting your loadout later in the game is not very high. Um and so I think going for the strongholds is necessary, and they're they're easy to clear. There's no juggernauts sitting at them. 
Um, so the AI is fine to fight. It's not a bunch of armored ones necessarily. There's some. So I think they did that pretty well for the loadout system. I don't prefer this system to just getting a free loadout in the first circle, of course. I would much rather have that. But they did it better than I thought they would. Yeah, I'm going to. Uh, so this is one point. This is one thing that is in the bad section that I'd written down. I'm going to talk about it now since we're talking about strongholds. Um, yeah, the AI not roaming the map and only being at strongholds is obviously an improvement over them being at strongholds and randomly in other places. That's obviously good. Uh, and it seems to be true. I've never seen this AI outside of the strongholds, so that's so kudos. Uh, however, I hate the idea of strongholds and the more i've played the more i am firm on this opinion uh first of all when you clear a stronghold it will just constantly reinforce and it's super fucking cringe uh there will be times where we take a stronghold and then we see a helicopter on our mini map and you just don't know if it's ai or some other player team unless you literally go look which is risky if it's a if it's real players because then you're like going outside maybe you're assuming it's ai because you know eventually an ai chopper is going to come and then it's not it's fucking biffle uh swag and uh i don't know who else whoever some other guy they play with with a 200 kd just fucking destroying you it's like okay cool well this only happened i was only so fucking haphazard about this because i assumed it was an ai helicopter because it probably was, and I know an AI chopper is going to come back anyway. So those need to be distinguished on the minimap, first of all. Uh, an AI to helicopter, color. yeah, versus... Some, AI should just be orange. Yeah, that would be fine. Something like that. Um, it's dumb that it's not. But the fact of it reinforcing constantly anyway is fucking stupid. Why does, why does this need to be the case? I cleared the stronghold. I fought the AI... I didn't want to fight any AI to begin with, by the way. I'm playing a BR. I want to fight zero AI, in fact. But you forced me to fight some AI. Fine. I'm done now. But smile. No, I'm not. Because they're going to constantly keep reinforcing here. Now, you could say, oh, well, just move. Sure. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes there are teams all around you and you can't move. Uh, sometimes the circle's too small to move. Sometimes it's the best building, so you, t you hold it. Um, and, but then the AI constantly keeps getting reinforced and it's fucking annoying because there have been gunfights that we've been in when we capture a stronghold with another actual team. I'm not kidding. One time I'm sniping. I'm on the roof of a stronghold. I'm looking at the other team in some building and the chopper landing spot. Guess where it is? Of course, right in the middle of us. So now it's just, it's all fucked. And I, as the sniper, I'm the one who gets fucked by this because they want to close distance. Now it's a whole lot easier because I can't see them because the chopper comes and the chopper deploys a smoke grenade when the fucking guys are rappelling out like it's invasion. So it's giving the other real players all this cover to come fucking flank me and fuck my ass, which they did, by the way. This is dumb. I'm playing Warzone. Why is the AI griefing me and helping this other team? It's, it's nonsense. I don't know why they constantly reinforce. It adds all this confusion. It probably, it definitely ruins everyone's performance for no reason, or at least gives them a performance hit for no reason. It's needlessly confusing. It doesn't add anything to the game, and there's no reason for it to be happening. Once the, once the stronghold is cleared, stop. The AI well, should be done now. It should be that simple. But also, like Tanner said... If one thing we had said is like, well, AI in Warzone is cringe, but if they're only at strongholds, you'll know that and you can just avoid strongholds if you want and you won't have to fight AI. Well, actually turns out wrong. You kind of do have to go to strongholds because otherwise you're going to not have a loadout for a very long time. It really is just optimal to go to a stronghold as soon as you can. So I really am, if I want to do well, forced to, to contend with strongholds. I can't avoid them. So I just hate that this is the only other way to get a loadout besides the community loadout. I don't think you should be forced to fight a bunch of AI to do as well as possible 
in the battle royale game that is designed for pvp but you really are there's no argument to be made where the optimal strategy is to avoid strongholds so and that's dumb yeah so the best the, pvp strategy shouldn't be to have to do pve first but it is but yeah, unfortunately so so the thing i figured out yesterday though when we were playing and i used my brain when we were bitching about this is the only way the stronghold loadout system works is if it keeps reinforcing because otherwise the next group can't get a loadout from it because in order to unlock so we Let's say our squad is the first one to a stronghold. We clear it out. We kill the AI. We defuse the bomb. The bomb that you defuse turns into a box that gives you your loadout. You grab it, and that's it. Um, by the time a second squad rolls around, what they have to do is kill X number of AI at the stronghold, which is like 10 or something. So if it's not constantly reinforcing, no one else would be able to get their loadout. I think that would be better. So then only three teams on the map could get their loadout? That's worse. Through the strongholds, yeah. I think that would be better, yeah. Because then yeah, it would make But if you're the one that keeps getting spots. fucked. Uh, not if there's just one that'd be I don't know. That'd be very hot then. But no, because you don't land on They're it. They don't tell you right away. Too. They are random. And that too, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know. I mean, yeah, I would rather this just not be the system. We just got a free loadout early on, of course. But um that's the reason they again. do reinforce yeah. in their current the current way they have this designed is because the next group has to kill AI to get their loadout. Yeah. So if the AI is all dead, of course. Yeah, but that's, that's worth mentioning. You're right. Another little pro tip, by the way, if you go to strongholds that are not a stronghold in that game because it's random, but the stronghold will still be there, it won't have AI in it. You can enter it. It seems to have a lot better loot in it, though. It has more money. It'll have like guns, uh, like backpacks and shit like that. So if you're near a loadout that doesn't happen to actually spawn as a loadout with, or as a, as a stronghold, sorry, with AI, then definitely go clear that stronghold and loot it. Cause you'll get good loot from it for sure. Another small pet peeve. That's a good point. Yeah. That is why it reinforces. It gives op an opportunity for other teams that come later to come get their loadout. I do think it would be better if, yeah, there were just, those are, th those are the three strongholds. Three teams can get a loadout, first come, first serve. If you didn't get there, get fucked, because there's going to be a community loadout anyway. So it's not like you are locked out of loadouts forever. You're just locked out of getting it from a stronghold. Yeah. It would be annoying if you have a shit spawn and they're all super far from you and you get beat. But it would also make for an interesting mid game, which this game kind of doesn't have right now, kind of lacks a mid game. It's either really hot or really cold in the beginning. And then the mid game is just, you don't, you rarely see anyone. And then the end game is super hot and fun because the map is so big and because everyone's crashing to be fair. But, uh, if the strongholds were only accessible once that would make these, that would create a really strong mid game. Cause then all of the lobby would be incentivized to go to one of three random spots and you would know going in, okay, this is going to be hot because we want our loadout. We want to get there first. Everyone else is thinking this. We're about to bang. Hopefully we get it first and then we have our loadout. It would create a mid game that I think the game lacks right now. But maybe that wouldn't be better. I don't know. I see why they're doing it this way. I just hate it. Or if you want other people to be able to access a loadout, I think it would be nice if all the strongholds had a bunker that players couldn't enter and that's where the ai spawned from so they spawned from inside the building and came up through like a hatch instead of a helicopter that would be better too i think but maybe not i don't know quick pet peeve by the way why do i have to diffuse an explosive in a stronghold to capture it imagine i'm a, an al katal i'm osama bin katala Okay, and I'm the captain of this stronghold. Why the fuck would I plant a bomb in my own <laughs> fortress? Right. If I'm attacking a stronghold and Osama bin Katala plants an explosive inside of his base, I don't want to defuse it. I want to let it go off. They all die and then smile. I defeated the enemies. Why is that a thing? 
Someone explain the logic of that to me. Why it would should they be plant planting a bomb? a bomb. Yeah. Yeah, you should be planting a bomb. Why would they plant a bomb in their own fortress? It's completely retarded. Or it should be like go in and just like do like the intel thing. Like go to this computer and steal Download the hard drive data. Upload, and it's like a yeah. 10 second little. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. You still get your load out either way. But it's like, yeah, why are they? Blo why are you defusing a bomb in their own stronghold? Yeah, it's, it's so <laughs> stupid. It's like, what the fuck is this? I the most advanced COD of all time. Yeah, so, I mean, active so, devs don't have brains, yeah. I have a thought. If it comes to, so obviously everyone, not everyone, most of the player base is wanting loadouts for Circle, and that's what they're asking for. I don't know if Infinity Ward would change this, because if they did, what purpose would a Stronghold serve? Can you think, how could they make it so Strongholds have a purpose, if you still get a loadout, a free loadout in the first circle, what could they provide to you? Like maybe like advanced UAVs or some good shit or something. And it only happens one time. Like what other purpose? Because that's why I have a hard time believing they're going to revert the systems because they've designed the fucking AI and the stronghold this way to get your loadout that way. So why would people go there if you got a free loadout anyways? It well, would like ruin their whole AI shit they were on this year. Yeah, you're kind of right. It would make strongholds way less important uh they could give you shit but already doing a stronghold gets you more than a loadout you get like a muni you get backpacks you get three armor boxes or excuse me you, I, from what i remember it seems like every time it drops one muni if you're playing quads four armor boxes four plate vests some backpacks some kill streaks uh there's a lot of good shit that's true you know. Okay, yeah. And uh, like, I I'm thinking if it was us and loadout dropped and then. We wouldn't do it to be clear, but it would be worth it. No, doing I was going to say so. the opposite. If you got that good of shit and you can get like advanced UAVs and stuff, if there is one close and you get your loadout and it's like 200 meters away, I'm like, oh, let's well, go clear that advanced. stronghold real yeah, quick. Yeah, which you can get advanced right now. So I You're guess right. that's how they could do it is y you would have to get rare shit with it, but only once. And then. And then at that point, what would the strong, what would the purpose of the stronghold be for the rest of the game? It could reinforce and provide nothing or maybe yeah. respawn at some point later, or then you clear out the five AI that spawn there and then no, none come back. And again, I can't see them doing that because they design all of this. They designed and keep talking about their AI system, how smart they are this year. I can't see them making some system where they just like cut them out of the game. So that's why I'm worried we may never see like a free early loadout drop like we have always had in Warzone. Yeah. One thing they could do maybe is there are free early loadouts, but there are like not enough for everyone. Mm. So there are fewer of them or they are like they despawn if one team uses them. Um, so that way the strongholds would still serve a purpose if you missed the first free community loadout. Maybe they would do that. Because then they would think the stronghold still have a purpose yeah. in that case. But you're absolutely right. The AI, there's going to be AI and strongholds in Warzone 2 until Warzone 3. They're never getting rid of this, of course. Yeah, there's no chance. There's no chance. Hopefully they become less relevant, but they're never going yeah. away. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. Yep. But I, I just think it it sucks. Um it sucks that the again the most effective way to play this BR is to PvE every single match. Yep. Like holy shit, it gets so boring and old. It's so dumb. And, like I'm already tired of it. And it's been And what, what you were days? saying about the um about getting stuck at one Jax and I were playing duos yesterday and we got stuck at a stronghold for like two or three reinforcement waves because we hit the one at observatory and there were guys on the hill right next to us that and you can high. shoot in through th through the windows also so we're getting shot from those windows we try to run outside there's another team on the other side shooting at us they're of course not fighting each other so we're just like stuck in there as ai is also dropping in and then rushing in our building so we're blowing through all our ammo trying to you know get angles from the windows we're getting cracked we're wasting all of our plates and there's we can't leave because if we leave we're dead to players and we have to just stay in there and keep fighting ai and that was super fucking annoying yeah so that that will happen no, no matter how good you are you will be put in a scenario at least once where you get stuck in a stronghold and just there's like no good way out yeah mm -hmm. yeah so. i don't know uh, so dumb. my last yeah yeah, yeah go on. 
my last thing here uh end game the end game is very fun very very fun but this game is suffering from like the same problems called dara did at launch which is early game can be slow or hot depending on where you drop and then mid game is just a snooze fest there's nothing going on players spread out dying early on a massive map with 150 players people crashing uh hardly any uavs because they're limited in the buy station so then people aren't popping uavs and rushing you're essentially just aimlessly running around trying to figure out where people are and the map's so fucking big you'll run around drive around not hear any gunshots won't know what to do so you're just running around in circles searching for other players but once you get to the late game the final circle or two there's a lot of teams left typically for that size because they also saw no one mid game of course they were also running around aimlessly and then the battle is a ton of fun but Regardless, that can't like fully make up for the fact that I just spent 10 minutes running around not being able to find anyone while I was searching for people. It's a boring mid game, but the end game is really, really, really fun games. Um, but th something needs. I think it will honestly get a lot better just when like the crashing issue is fixed. But it really seems apparent to me that this map should have 200 players on it. And of course, we're never going to see that. They can't launch a video game that works. We're never going to get an extra 50 people when there's still guys playing on an Xbox fucking 360, you know, yeah. or a PlayStation one. So we're never getting 200 players on the map, which is unfortunate. But I think this map would play so well with that many. Um and we'll have a better gauge of that in a couple of weeks when they maybe fix some of the crashing issues and server lag and whatnot. Yeah. I, but it's just re really fun end game. Mid game is very lacking though. I agree. I think it's a, yeah, I think part of it is just the map is bigger than ever. Uh, and so many people are crashing. The lobbies are smaller than ever, even at the outset. Uh, and the lack of UAVs, like you pointed out, that's a big part of it too. And the lack of like big game bounties also, you know, um, that's another, just kind of a UAV, but like the fact yeah. of all of these things, because if you have a bunch of you, if you could buy unlimited UAVs, there will at least be some teams just chasing dots, which is good, which even if you're not that team, your mid game is going to be more interesting because those guys are going to come try and fight you, you know? Uh, so there are a lot of reasons the mid game is super slow, but it is super slow. I don't know if I can think of a, a game we've played that had a unengaging mid game. I think maybe that they one duos exist. game we won, we had a fairly consistent amount of PVP, but that was the exception, not the rule. Yeah. There have been a lot of mid games where we're just like, okay. Like we were on top of uh what's the Al Mazra City. We were on the high rise. Me, you, and Jake. And we were in the middle of the circle. And we could have stayed we actually did stay there for like three, four minutes. We we're like, all right, well, what do you guys want to do? We we're like, uh. -huh. Yeah, we didn't know what to do. And we could have just stayed there for a solid five actual more minutes, probably, and not seen another soul. Oh, like, for sure. Easily, you know. Yeah. And like, yeah, it real, real slow. I will say this, though. I am OK with the pace of Warzone 2 being slower than Warzone 1. Not this much slower, though. Yeah, it's so very we'll slow. See, yeah, so we'll see what the pace is like once the crashing issues are fixed. That will definitely increase the pace. Will it increase it sufficiently for me? Don't I have no idea. I'm leaning toward maybe, but I don't know. I find it less likely that it will um be sufficiently fast for me i'm okay with it being slower paced than warzone one i expect it to be slower paced than warzone one especially without balloons which i don't think we're ever getting at least not for so a either. very long time um or unlimited uavs uh i i don't think it's ever going to be as fast paced as you know warzone one uh and I, i'd be okay with that but again yeah how how slow will it end up shaking out to be? I don't know. But yeah. But I am a little concerned about that.
But to be fair, another thing too is uh, we haven't been like our mid games. If we really wanted, could be hotter. We would just have to be getting vehicles more and going bounty to bounty. Yeah, we that's true. I guess we haven't tried that yet. Yeah, we could be having more interesting mid games if we really wanted to. It is still a new map for us and everyone else. We are still playing slower than we otherwise will. Maybe just by virtue of our play style adapting more to this map, our mid games will get more interesting. But even if we did do that, the game will still be slower paced than Warzone 1. Maybe that's okay, though. That remains to be seen, I think. Yeah. It's never too early to play holiday music, and it's never too early to start thinking about gifts. Whether it's for a friend or the friends in your pants, you can make this a season to be jolly with Manscaped. Do your little drummer boy a favor and use the Lawnmower 4.0 to avoid another silent night in the bedroom. Then add in Manscaped's top-of-the-line shower products to have the people thinking, all I want for Christmas is you. Santa cares about his sack, and so should you. Look nice when you get naughty by going to manscaped.com and use code DROPSHOT for free shipping and 20% off. The Manscaped Platinum Package 4.0 is the one-stop shop for the man who deserves it all. It has everything needed to help you deck the halls from face to balls, just in time for mistletoe season. The Platinum Package has each product from the best-selling performance package, plus ultra premium body wash, ultra premium two-in-one shampoo and conditioner and ultra premium deodorant it's the best way to smell fresh from your santa hat to your candy cane the lawnmower 4.0 body trimmer and the weed whacker nose and hair ear hair trimmer feature proprietary advanced skin safe technology to protect your delicate presence plus both are waterproof so there's no issue clearing the snow out of your driveway now that you've groomed your candy cane it's time to make sure you don't smell like a reindeer with the Platinum Package's shower products. All the Manscaped shower gear is sulfate-free, vegan, and made to have your skin feeling hydrated and smelling fresh. But smelling good does not stop at the shower. The Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner can solve stank problems all day long. Once they touch your sack, you'll never go back. The Platinum Package 4.0 sitting under the tree is guaranteed to put anyone in the holiday spirit. And for the perfect stocking stuffer, add in the brand new Body Buffer, an incredible body scrubber that makes exfoliating easy and a lot cleaner than that old loofah. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code DROPSHOT at manscaped.com. Once again, 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com using code DROPSHOT, Manscaped. Get your jingle balls ready for the holidays. All right, now, moving on to the bad. Here we go. <laughs> Things that are bad. We've got, oh. we've got a couple words. Why don't we just kick it off, Tanner? <laughs> we gotta, this is going to be a, a longer section than the first part you guys heard. Um, so the bad. I, get, I think the obvious place to start is the bugs. Now, when it comes to the bugs, don't know where to start. There's literally an overwhelming amount of them. Almost every facet of the game has a major or minor bug involved. True. Audio disappearing, player models not rendering at range. Oh, yeah. No animations um, at range. Yeah. UI bugs, pings disappearing, can't loot backpacks on the ground, can't pick up guns on the ground, constant crashing, server lag, high latency... Uh, I mean, things just straight up not working. Heartbeat sensor not working half the time. Supposedly, I haven't used it. That's what I keep hearing people say. Uh, don't know how the perk packages are working. People say they've never got a high alert ping. I've also used high alert. I've never once gotten a ping. Perks, I mean, things just actually not working at all. Um, terrible performance. Uh, I mean, I'm literally missing like hundreds of things. It's just the loadout icon disappearing, even though it's still there. Yeah, uh, I we Which have not seen bug. this buggy of a Call of Duty launch since Cold War was a fucking awful launch as well, because Cold War still isn't a complete game and never will be. But I mean, this is worse than Warzone One. This is worse than the launch of Warzone One easily. There are just so many issues with the game right now, and. I see people like complain about it on Twitter, 
And then you see another guy say, I've never had it like any issues with the game. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, how are we playing the same game, man? You cannot go. I'm not kidding. We have not played quads and finished a game where all four people were able to complete the game and not crash or have a major bug. It has not happened. It doesn't happen. It's not possible, I don't think. I don't think we've had a game where any member on the team didn't experience a bug. So if we play quads and play a match, all four people experienced a bug every time, I think. There are so many. Yeah, like you said. There are I mean, yeah, I have they're limitless. I mean my, so many um, bugs. My animations messed up the other day and I didn't think my gun was reloading, but turns out it was. He just wasn't doing animation. Mm. And then I had like no sound will just cut out randomly. You'll get in a car. You'll have no sound for four seconds. Um, I mean, it, it is insane. And it is very obvious to me that this game was not ready to be launched. And they launched it anyways. This game should not have came out this year. This is what we had talked about. We had said they either need a launch. They're either going to launch it super early or next year. It should have launched next year. This should have came out in January to at least fix some of these major bugs. I don't know what play testers do because how was this ever play tested and set and put live? I mean, the amount of crashes is we have people on our discord that literally cannot have the game open for longer than. 10 minutes or the game crashes. Yeah. Tried everything, uninstalling, reinstalling the game, every graphics driver available. So many things. There is no way they can even play the game. How was any of this ever play tested? And how was this game launched? I don't understand it. And they hype it all up and it was, oh my God, the amount of bugs. I can't believe it. It really is unbelievable. It's the buggiest COD launch possibly that we've ever seen. Definitely, really that we've ever, bad. definitely that I've ever seen. Yeah, there are so many bugs. Uh, some, and they range in severity. Yeah, some of them are not that big of a deal. Like one of them, um, if you're like sniping and you see some guy like running f at like 100 meters, 150, 200 meters, he won't have an animation. It'll just be some guy. He's standing, just floating. Just standing man, like floating. So luckily they still move, so you can still shoot them. But there's no you don't they don't look like they're running. It looks but, ridiculous. Yeah. But you don't know where their head's actually at though, because it's just a, a target yeah, standing true. still but moving, so you don't know where the actual hitbox is. So you really can't hit them. Because I tried sniping at people like that one time and I was never able to hit them. So I mean it's just then it's like I picked up dead silence, not once as dead silence work. You pop it and it disappears. It's just every facet of the game is broken in some way. Everything. Yeah. Yeah, it is not good. And the issue with even having like the minor bugs that sure don't really matter, that's something else they have to fix. And that's going to cause like content and balance True. to be pushed aside because they're going to have to fix literally hundreds, if not thousands of minor bugs. And they should fix those before they do anything else. That's what the frustrating part is. Uh, so, hey, if you work for Activision, you better be working on Thanksgiving because I want to play. I want to yeah. play Warzone Thanksgiving evening. Game better be working. Yeah. Shouldn't have put it live, bitch. Fuck you. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's it's super buggy. And the, there, yeah, and I feel really bad for people. Like, there are a number of people in our community who, like, can't, actually can't play. Like, they can't finish a match of Warzone. Some of them can't even launch, but if you can, they just crash in every single match. I haven't been crashing that much. I've crashed a couple times, but not a ton. But some people, it's like crazy, yeah. There are a lot of fucking issues. And like you said, this is either going to delay content, or it's not going to delay content. In either case, that's not good. Because if it delays content, well, that sucks. Because then we're not getting content as soon as we should be. If it, does delay, if it doesn't delay content, that means we're going to get new content that's going to also introduce new bugs in addition to the old bugs that they didn't fix yet before releasing the new content, which is the far more likely scenario, by the way. This is what Activision's been doing for the last four years. They won't fix bugs before they release a new season. That's never Remember when happening. Raven said that last year? Yeah. Hilarious they said that. Yeah. Oh, Hysterical God. they said that. So fuck, fuck Raven, fuck Activision, fuck every dev studio that works there, of course. It is a buggy fucking disaster, yeah. Um, another, moving on here, we could talk about the bugs all day. They're going to fix some of them. Hopefully they fix all of them. They won't, though. Uh, and the game's always going to have bugs. And mark my words, by the way, 
There exists a bug in Warzone right now that will never be fixed again. Mm -hmm. I promise you, one of the bugs that exists in Warzone right now will go unfixed forever. Yeah. I guarantee it. It happened with Warzone 1. It happened with MW 2019. There were bugs in beta that right now, if you launch Modern Warfare 2019, are still in the game. I promise you, there are a number of bugs in Warzone 2 right now that will never be fixed. Smile. Anyways, <laughs> moving on from that. The pinging system. Terrible. And I don't think this is a bug. I think they just poorly designed the pings, how pinging works. Um, I ping something. It hangs out for, I don't know, 30 seconds, maybe out. a minute. And then the ping disappears. Don't time my pings out ever. If you want me to unping something, I'll do it. Don't do it for me, first of all. But if you're going to time it out, like Warzone 1 does, make it two or three minutes. Not 30 seconds or whatever the fuck it is. Also, make it more obvious. God, it's so not obvious. I it's, never see your guys' pings. It's You have to search hard to find a ping. And it makes me wonder, if I was like random filling without like voice, and someone pinged something, I would never know. Because when we're dropping every single time, we'll be like, Tander will say, for example, okay, let's drop here. And I have to ask him, where? Not because he didn't ping it. He pinged it. Doesn't matter, though. Because I'm not going to find it unless he tells me where the ping is. And then I'll go to the POI he said, squint my eyes a little bit, I'm 30, and then I'll find the ping. But I have to, like, actively search for it. This is absurd. Make the pings significantly more obvious. I think that is... More well, obvious. yeah, that part's not a bug. But them disappearing, I think that's a bug. Because I believe that used to happen in Warzone 1. But even, like... You'll ping a loadout drop and you'll be on your character running and it'll show it's like off to the right, but it's not. It's like off to the it'll left ping or something. It's like the wrong loadout. Yeah. It's so weird. It's bizarre. Um, That's a so bug. it's buggy and also just terrible. Yeah. Like the, the default ping is like this it little. It's this little white, like, down arrow or something, I think. And it is so not obvious. Like, you, you've even done this before as like, you you did this yesterday. I think you marked something somewhere to drop, and then I marked something else and then started dropping. You're like, cool, I guess we're not going to my mark. I'm like, what are you talking about? Where, what did you mark? And I literally just didn't see it because yeah. I can't see it. And in Warzone 1, it would have been like very obvious. I'm like, oh, okay, he already marked something. So, yeah, shit game. Yeah, make it better. Literally copy Checks and it. paste the pinging from Warzone 1. I don't know what pings looked like in Warzone 1, and I don't know how they function. I don't remember. I couldn't tell you. I have no idea. Here's what I do know. In Warzone 1, when some guy pinged something, I saw it. I don't know why. I don't know how, but I remember being able to see it always. So do that. Whatever it was, do that. That simple. Not hard. We don't need to reinvent things that were working before. Especially yeah. pings. I don't need you to get innovative with a fucking ping. Okay? Make it work. That's all I care about. It's funny, too, because I even changed the key binds for that stuff. Like in Warzone 1, it, when I pull up my attack map or when I pull up my map, like I think pressing middle mouse cleared the pings. And then now in this game, I have to right click to clear the pings. I'm like, dude, why are we changing the binds for this? I've been used to this same button for two years. Why are we changing the binds for no goddamn reason? It's just all so annoying and weird that they like make unnecessary little minor changes like that. Yeah. Agreed. Okay, so we're getting some potentially good comms from Roy Nolan in the chat. He's saying pings are pretty trash. Found a setting to change the color of pings from the default white triangle. Helps a tad. That would help a lot. I'm going to make my pings fucking pink uh, so that I can see them. So for Yeah, all you can you change all that like multiplayer too. Go to colorblind settings and then uh, co-opt other people's disabilities for your own benefit and change the ping color. That's a good idea. So good comms, Roy. Thank you. I don't think it's colorblind. It was like, isn't oh, there like a color not? intensity tab or something? I think it's separate from colorblind this year. Because it's okay. the same thing that we... Didn't you do the thing in multiplayer where you changed diamonds to brighter, more vibrant red so they're easily spotted? Yeah, I don't know if that was in colorblind settings, but yes, I did. Jake told us to do that, so I did it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I told us, yeah. I told Jake. 
Well, it's, it's in there somewhere. Yeah, you guys will find it. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe you won't actually because the UI, but yeah, one of these luck. weeks, you guys will be able to find it. Good luck. You may or may not find it. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Um, another cringe thing that I don't know if this is a bug or not. It could. This could it, go either way. It's probably way. a bug. But when you're. If you're dead and you're spectating your teammates. So let's say. Because Tanner kept doing this to me and it was fucking annoying me. Let's say I'm playing trios. Tanner dies, as usual. And I'm running around and he's spectating me. And Jake is running around in front of me. <laughs> right? Yeah. Tanner was like, this. there's a guy! There's a guy in front of you! Surely, Kill him. yeah, that was there's me for sure. Guy. And I'm looking around like, where, dude? Because I, in game, not dead, can see that there's yeah. a name tag and that that's my teammate, Jake. But Tanner is the spectator. There are no. There, Jake doesn't have a name tag from my perspective as Tanner spectating. So he just thinks there are enemies where there aren't any. Change it. Change it. He should be seeing exactly what I'm seeing. All the name tags I see, all the pings I see, all the icons I see, obviously. Uh, this is a relatively minor point, but it's annoying. I also don't know if they're... Um, if this is, again, if this is a bug or not, I have no idea. I hope it is, and I hope it gets fixed now, because it is unironically very cringe. Yeah, and then, like, you don't see hit markers when you're watching your teammate. You see, like, it's, it's, like, you don't know if you're even hitting the person. It's weird. Um, along with that, too, is, I don't know if you've noticed, if you down someone, so, like, in multiplayer and Warzone, if, say, in Warzone 1, you shoot someone, Right by your reticle, it'll say downed. It'll like that'll pop up and tell you. It's the same thing in multiplayer when you play and it'll say like one shot kill, defense, offensive metal, something like that when you kill someone. It doesn't tell you that in this game. All it does is show a little guy, a little white guy on the screen, like laying on the ground for a guy, split huh? second. So it's hard to even tell half the time if you actually down someone. I'm like, why do I have to look for that? Just tell me down. And it's issues like that and the no name tags and spectators that worry me because I'm not exaggerating. It is hundreds of these little things that need to be fixed. Hundreds. And it's not all going to be done in a week. This is going to take fucking months. And that's like, that's the thing is so many of these are so minor. You're right. But when stacked on top of each other, it's such an annoying experience having to deal with all of these game in and game out constantly. Yeah. No matter how minor they are, they piss you off when there's 400 of them. Yeah. So, by the way, if you want to change the color of your pings, here's how you do it. You go to your settings, go to interface, and then under readability, there's color customization. Expand this, and then you're going to see a bunch of colors you can change at the bottom, interface element colors. The one labeled neutral is the is what dictates the color of pings. So change your neutral color. I just changed mine to hot pink. So now my pings will be hot pinky, pink. huh? By default, nice, it's man. white. So change that to pink. That should hopefully help you. I imagine I'm gonna it do red. will. Bright red. Red is fine, I guess. Red's the enemy color. I just like pink because nothing else is pink. on. But my if you're face. marking something, it's usually because there's an enemy there. So yeah, that's why I'm thinking bright red. Figure it out. Whatever. Fuck you. Um, uh, anyways. Got it. Um, got it. Are you done? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this next issue here, this is more of a major issue. Um, the looting is as bad as I expected. I'm getting used to it, and I understand it completely now, but it's still just an unnecessary shit system. Like, aside from the fact that bugs out constantly and you can't grab items on the ground, or you have to, like, lay prone at one specific angle to, like, grab a gun... It just takes so much time, and I didn't think about this until I was watching Aiden play yesterday. Holy shit, I feel so bad for controller players having to navigate the backpack and looting menu. It is bad. It is very bad. So, like, when you there open up someone's backpack... There is a backpack, that helps with that, supposedly, by the way. It's like backpack behavior mixed. It allows you to use your D-pad or your left stick to change where your highlight is so that makes the backpack a lot easier for you on controller make sure you change that setting it's like backpack just go to your settings search backpack and then you'll find um yeah, yeah. the behavior backpack behavior i think it is mixed but it's still dog shit despite that. well yes yeah, so it's like they have to go so when you loot someone's backpack you have 
there's a, a there's a horizontal menu of what they had in their backpack. And then below that, there's another horizontal menu of what they had on your character. And then below that is your menu of what you have in your backpack. So if you're on controller, you have to constantly press up and down on the arrows and everything going through all of that shit. That is so annoying and slow and unnecessary. And I keep people saying, I keep seeing people say shit like, Oh, obviously like you didn't play blackout. This is what, how the system was. I don't fucking care. I don't care what the system was in Blackout. This isn't a good system. The Warzone 1 system was perfect for looting. Why do we have to change it? How come sometimes I open a chest and guns pop out, and then the next thing I have to open a fucking duffel bag that has a decoy grenade in it? Huh? Yeah. Like, why does this make any sense at all? It's an, another unnecessary system that just slows down the game and makes it play so much worse. Yeah. Like you, you can't loot people in the open anymore now either. You have to basically wait till everyone's clear and then fucking lay prone and loot their backpack. Whereas like in other games, if you're like looting something in proximity, like PUBG, you keep moving your character. So the whole time I'm looting there with tab open, it's proximity looting. So I'm pressing W A S D. So I'm not getting one shot. You're moving the whole time. You can't do that in this game. If you press D once and move two inches, it pulls you out of the backpack menu. So you can't, you have to just literally sit still to loot their backpack. It's cringe, slows down the game, unnecessary and confusing. Yeah, it's really bad. Uh, this is, and this is something Tanner and I have talked about, one of the absolute strongest, one of the best things about Warzone 1 and what made it as accessible as it was, was that the looting system was utterly and completely simplified god it was easy and clean where you either had room for the thing or you didn't and it's that simple there was no backpack there was no looting at all really you could pick up a weapon if you have two weapons it'll swap them you could pick up a lethal if you have a lethal it'll swap it and that's it uh you had dedicated slots for everything and only dedicated slots for everything and this made looting, and then if you would just run over things and you had space for them, it would auto pick them up. Run over, you don't have plates, you run over plates, you get plates. You don't have to press a button. You run over ammo, you don't have ammo, you pick up the ammo. It's that simple. Yeah. This is what made Warzone so goddamn fun. And this is probably another reason that this game is playing a lot slower than Warzone 1 is that I have to sit here with my thumb up my ass trying to figure out what to loot, how to loot, trying desperately to get in the exact right position for me to even be able to pick this thing up. They do need to be able, they do need to add proximity looting so that I don't have to find the fucking precise pixel where I can pick up this fucking gun I want. And instead I can just open my backpack and see uh, a menu of everything on the ground in this vicinity like PUBG or has, for example. They need to add that. But yes. also proximity looting would be excellent. Yes. Or but, hey, what they had, what they had is what they uh, ultimately what they should go back to. They won't ever. So this doesn't <laughs> matter, but I can see them changing this. It, uh, I don't think so. I, hope I can you're see right, but I don't think so. I can see them at, at least changing it. So when you open everything up, it falls onto the ground. Like you open one of the med cases or oh, the yeah, medicine cabinets, mm -hmm. it falls on the ground. Even that would be better. Um, that would be better for sure. But it's like even how they put loot on like on um, like you're in a little gas station convenience store, like on the shelving and there, the way they put loot is annoying even because to like grab certain items, you literally have to crouch down to grab it or it won't even allow you to do it. And that's on one shelf. And then right above that is other items on another shelf. It's yeah. just it, it's so annoying. It slows the game down a lot. And one thing that set Warzone 1 apart from all the other BRs was the simplified looting system. I think a lot of sweaty kids, like all of you listening, underestimate just how accessible and fun this made Warzone. I didn't have to worry about inventory management in Warzone 1. I didn't have to worry about taking time to loot. I just fucking got the things I needed or had space for and I moved on. Now you could make an argument that this is better. It's certainly more depth. I would even say there's more of a skill gap when you have the backpack system. So maybe I am okay with it, but if you're going to have this system, it needs to function better. Uh, there needs to be proximity loot. If I am holding an AR and there's a sniper on my sling 
and I run over a stack of AR or sniper ammo, it needs to automatically go in my inventory, just like it used to in Warzone 1. That works very inconsistently, if at all, in this game right now. Uh, this is unacceptable. At the very least, these things should just be sucked into my backpack automatically. If, I, if these are one of the weapons I have equipped, that ammo should automatically go into my character inventory, unless it's full. If you need to make me press a button to stow it in my backpack, that's fine. But that's supposed to be that way. That's a bug. And it's not working. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, the same should be the case for plates. Uh, the same should be the case for backpacks. If I run over a large backpack, I need to automatically equip it. In what scenario would I not pick up a large backpack if I don't already have one? None. There's yeah. no downside. That needs to automatically be uh, picked up. Yep. Uh, of plate vest. If I don't have a plate vest on and I run over one, why would I ever not want to pick that up? Give it to me automatically. They need to do all of these things. And then, you know what? I actually am on board with the backpack system because it does create a skill gap. Um, and it does create some interesting um, outplayability and for mm. sight. This is I and this is making it more of a traditional BR and some people aren't going to like this because they're going to get gapped by someone who had the brain power to pick up fucking 600 AR ammo. So they're ready to just keep going and you're not. You didn't really think about what's in your backpack. You have more plates than you need and eight precision airstrikes that you won't be able to use. Hey, get gapped then. I, I, I mean, that's part of the skill gap of a BR. I, you could, I could argue that's not good for Warzone. I could argue Warzone should be a more casual BR and that shouldn't be the case. I would be totally fine if it wasn't, if that was the case, if we reverted back to our old system. I think that's a fair argument. And that is why Warzone 1, in, uh, partially at least, was so successful. But I could also make the argument that the backpack, you know what? Because it creates the skill gap, I do like it. I think I am ultimately on board with that the more I talk about this. But if you're going to do that, Everything that I would want in every scenario, I should always auto pick up, and that's not how it's working right now. Gas mask and self res is another one. If I run over a gas mask, give it to me if I don't have one. Why would I ever not want one? Self res, same thing. Th this, is, this is what makes the looting a lot more convoluted. Also, the piles of loot at a stronghold, once you've captured it, are completely... RNG and impossible to actually loot. When you finish a stronghold, there are three plate vests, a muni, three armor boxes, dead silence, a Vaznev, an RPK, and two SPX 80s in the same exact spot on the ground, plus a medium backpack. Good luck. Good luck yeah. looting what you want. They're I can see that there's other. an RPK on the ground. I literally can't pick it up. I don't have enough time to find the right pixel. Uh, the, the piles of loot are a disaster. A disaster. So if you're not going to give me proximity loot, then spread it out at least. But right now, it's unacceptable. Um, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's why PUBG system is fine, because they have backpacks and everything. You spawn with no backpack. You have to find one, and there's different sizes. But the fact that there's proximity looting, so I pull up tab when I'm close to a dead body, and can move around, your backpack inventory, you simply right-click something if you don't want it, and you left click something you do want or drag it over. It's so easy. Same thing with like your armor and your helmets you're wearing. Such an easy system. Um, they it's just so poorly designed this year. Uh, I do get what you're saying, though. I guess you if someone's smart enough to carry a bunch of things like you buy up all the UAVs at every buy station. So you have like three or UAVs in your large backpack or something, you know? Yeah, that that makes sense. I guess you could kind of consider that a skill gap, but I mean, not at all worth it. I'd rather just go back to the OG looting system we had. And I totally understand that perspective. I think that's totally fair, especially if they're not going to do looting well, like which is not being done well right now. Like, I'd absolutely rather go back to the old system than have to live with this looting system forever. But if they optimize this looting system and kept backpacks, I'd, I think overall I would prefer that. But yeah, 
But either way, everyone agrees looting needs to be better right now. Well, yeah, because it all just needs to be the same, and that's how PUBG is. PUBG has prox looting for everything. You see an item on the ground, you can grab it, or you can press tab, and it's in proximity. Right. That's the thing that we don't have, is certain items you have to open, like duffel bags, and then loot chests you open and the items pop out, and then a backpack you have to loot itself, and their primary gun is on the ground. There's like four different ways of giving us the loot. Just, yeah, like, I would be fine with it. You're right if I could just prox loot all of it. If I was in that general area. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we'll see a lot of tweaks to the looting system, though. I think it will get a lot better, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll revisit Won't be anytime this. soon, but, yeah. you know, maybe in January it'll be different. Uh, vehicle behavior is also complete and utter dog shit. Um, we lost a game yesterday that we were going to win because Bertha's will just not turn sometimes. I don't know why. I I did the same maneuver three times, and on the third try, the Bertha actually turned its wheels. I, I don't know why it didn't turn that one time. But also, why does a Bertha have better acceleration and handling than a fucking Jeep? Why Shout is the Jeep Jeeps. dog shit? It's literally just the Jeep, I think. It handles so badly. It's got slower acceleration than the Bertha. It has worse handling. It turns more slowly. It, it's like, it's like it's made out of fucking uranium. That's how dense it is. Like it handles like it's a, a fucking aircraft carrier, even though it's, it looks to be a lot smaller and lighter than the Bertha. It certainly doesn't fucking feel that way. I don't know what's going on with the Jeep. So I, I wrote down the vehicle behavior makes no sense. I think it's actually just the Jeep behavior makes no sense. The more I think about it, I can't remember every vehicle, but like the the electric vehicle seems fine. The Bertha seems. Oh, the electric too, vehicle is great. The, the, the Bertha GMC Hammer seems too good. It seems like it handles too well. The ATV is fast as fuck, which I like. There should be an advantage to having an ATV because you're, I mean, you have no cover. So it should go fast as fuck, which it does. I like the ATV. I think it's balanced, actually. But the uh, the Jeep specifically, so dog shit. It's, it's so bad. It's the worst handling vehicle I in a video why. game. It, it unironically handles worse than the Bertha. Makes no sense. Yeah. It's interesting, though, because it really is worth going out of your way to pick up the all-new 2023 GMC Hummer electric vehicle because it handles so much better. It's quiet. Gets great mileage because it's fully electric. Yeah. Don't have to stop at the gas stations often. Instant acceleration, a beautiful interior. What's the downside? You know, looking for sponsors. By GMC. the way, yeah, we'll take one. Uh, when you are at a gas station in the electric vehicle, it says e fueling instead of refueling. That's funny. I don't something like that. It says something different though. It's I, I thought it was cute. I thought it was a cute little... Yeah, it's a great vehicle. Whatever. Instant acceleration. Yeah. You're up to speed, man. Yeah, you can roll up on people quietly. I saw a... This was in a TV show, I think. I don't remember what show. But it was like these gangster-ass dudes or whatever that were talking about... And they all were driving Priuses. And then some other character was like, Why the fuck are you driving a Prius, dork? And the guy was like, Dude... I could roll up on people and they don't hear me. The Prius yeah. is fantastic. I'm making my whole organization buy one. It's silent drive-bys. And I was like, that's a funny joke. That's a great Stop. joke. Like fucking drug dealers driving Priuses. That's a funny, it's a great bit. So shout out to whatever TV show that was. That's a funny. I joke. think it was The Office, which you despise. I don't think it was The Office. Are there drug dealers in The Office? At The no, Office? No, but The Office did have a thing where it was like, the Prius is totally silent under... 10 miles an hour or something like that and then he like runs into a guy i don't remember how it works but something like that so yeah you like the office confirmed uh next i'm not yeah i like the office i hate audio. people who like the office i like the office itself though true audio not much to say it's not good footstep audio again i don't know how we just constantly go backwards the footstep audio is literally worse than wars on one i see way more people complaining about it than i ever did in wars on it, it does not exist even when there's no audio going on that's the thing with wars on one is there's audio clutter and you couldn't hear it this there's just no sounds on the map but then i can't hear the guy sprinting up behind me smile i'm not exaggerating when i when i say i've never heard someone's footsteps yet in Warzone two 
I literally yeah. think not once have I heard someone. You hear them if they're two floors above you. That's I haven't it, even had that happen to me yet. I haven't heard anyone make a footstep yet. Which is insane in a BR. It's completely insane. Yeah. So that's um, cool. Will that ever get... That's the one thing that will never get fixed, by the way. Footstep audio will always be dog shit. I always. think you're right. I, in Call I'm of Duty, always, improve, forever. But I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. This is something that's such a glaring bad issue that if this were any other game or developer, I would say, yeah, I can't hear any footsteps. I haven't heard any footsteps in 30 matches yet. But it's okay, guys, because the game just came out and they'll fix it. That's what I would normally be saying. But this is Activision, and it's Warzone 2. I don't know if I'll ever hear a footstep. I'm not kidding. I don't know. I hope so, but I don't know. Cause be, specifically because it's Activision. I have no idea. Excellent message from Goat in the chat. No footstep audio, just racial slur audio, and you got to guess where they're at. Yeah, true. <laughs> actually. True, yeah. They just don't know how to do directional audio of anything, I guess, because it doesn't work for proc shadow or footstep audio. Audio design of the year, by the way. Fuck you. Yeah, best audio. Your audio team should be fired. Everyone on your team should be fired. Uh, next, a time to kill. Not much to say. Way too fast, in my opinion. We need 50 more health, I think. For certain. Well, it feels weird, because like we talked about earlier with snipers, those take like three shots if you don't hit the head at range with a heavy sniper. Uh, but then up close, you'll get insta-melted by snake shots or a fennec or something, and like literally no time to react even, and you're melted, so... Time to kill needs to be faster. Uh, once we see... Uh, yeah, sorry, slower. Once we see some more weapon balance here, uh, then we'll revisit that. But as of now, um, overall, time to kill is way too fast. Uh, yeah, I, I think there is an impulse for people to say maybe it's because some of the weapons are overpowered. I disagree. I, I think the... I think the time to kill in general is just too fast. And even if every weapon was balanced... Um, it would still be too fast. I've yeah. gotten insta give to too many guns to think that it's just those guns specifically being overpowered. I don't think so. I think the time to kill is just in general across the board far too fast. And the only way to fix it is, like you said, to add more health. We need yeah. to have more health. Or um, I think actually a probably a better solution, maybe a better solution would be to increase the amount of health a plate provides you. I don't know how you would do that, actually. Uh, one of the two, or maybe both, but when I'm full plated, I need to survive by getting shot more times than I do now across the board. I, I think we just need more health somewhere. Um, it's, it's far too fast. And it also... Uh, Sometimes it feels inconsistent too. Yeah, very. I, and I think That's what I'm saying is, is one gun melts you and then the next one is dog shit. Yeah, I, I think part of it is probably multipliers going crazy. Because my first death in Warzone 2, I had a vest and was full plated. And I just couldn't believe how fast I died. Yeah. And I, 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 I have to think he like got a headshot or neck shot or something. And the multipliers are like really high. I don't know if that's where you would address the TTK. But again, are you going to change the multiplier for all 51 guns in your game right now? Probably not. Let, just give us more health and then also tweak the multipliers probably for a lot of these guns. Um, I think that's where you could start. Do you think this will be changed? This is one where I'm not sure. I don't. I, I could see them making the TTK slower. I could also see them not doing that. I don't know where I stand. I can that. see them nerfing some guns. I can't see Infinity Ward adding an I'm extra 50 with health. You. I think that's the most likely. Yeah. Just And we're basing this off of what we saw in OG Warzone, of what they did. Right. You know, things like the, the health changes and most of the weapon balancing was done when Raven was in control, not Infinity Ward. Infinity Ward did almost really nothing to the game. It was very similar, which is why I think this game is going to be very similar a year from now. They'll fix a few of the bugs, introduce thousands more, and it'll still be a slower BR than Warzone 1 overall. Yeah. Unfortunately. Um, I think yeah. you're right. 
And when it comes to a slow BR, uh, my next thing, base movement speed seriously needs to be increased 5% across the board. Walking, sprinting, tack sprinting, sliding, all of it needs to be sl sped up. So slow. Uh, will this ever happen? Absolutely not. No. Uh, and this adds into how slow this game feels. With the looting system, the moving, we really need to get back in the habit of going for a car. We we have yeah, to. We got to start getting vehicles. When you play a game like PUBG, you land certain places depending on if there's a vehicle there or not. That's what we're just gonna have to do because you have to get around the map quickly. The movement is awful. You can't you can't move fast across the map. Uh, so we have to start prioritizing vehicles. Um, that's just something we'll have to get used to. But regardless, the base movement speed needs to be increased. It's so frustratingly slow. It's a slow movement speed for how fast the time to kill is. Yeah. It's yeah, a bad combo. It's a really to, bad combination. That's a good framing because you're right. Like if you get caught in the open up close ish, you're just you have no chance. There's nothing you can do. Um, and that's not. Good. Yeah. Yeah. The the movement speed does need to I think be faster. Uh, and and they could they could increase movement speed, but keep like ADS strafe speed the same so that you don't get insane like SMGs. That's what I would want them to do. In fact is to not change ADS strafe speed or whatever. These are probably tied together, so it would probably be hard for them to do that. But I think the movement across the board needs to just be quicker. Because, like, we have... We also don't have balloons anymore. We don't have slide cancel to reset tax sprint anymore. And we have a bigger map than we've ever had. So, like... Yeah. And, and there's no fast travel system anymore. So our ability to navigate the map has been severely hindered. On top of that, we can't move very quickly at all. So yeah, I think the base movement speed just, yeah, 5% across the board sounds like a good start for sure. Yeah, good start. Yeah, maybe let's do 20% right on the yeah. zoom. Yeah, yeah. Um, next thing, again, that adds to how slow this game is. You can't plate well sprinting. I cannot stress enough how annoying and unnecessary this change is. Keep all your not being able to slide cancel shit changes that you made, whatever, I don't care. The fact that I can't plate while sprinting pisses me off more than that, actually. Because you can't get away from a gunfight. What am I supposed to do if I'm one shot? Nothing. You don't have time to plate. You have to literally just keep running and then get somewhere and try to just chow the guy. You cannot armor up as someone's chasing you, shooting at you. There's fucking nothing you can do. There's zero outplay potential there. You need to make it such a simple thing. We've always had it. Make it so I can sprint and plate up. Pretty sure in real life, if you're trying to get realism, you can shove a fucking plate in while moving faster than a slow walk. Change it. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, and the way Warzone 1 handled this was perfect because you could, so that you could either plate standing still in Warzone 1, you could plate while walking in Warzone 1, or you could plate while sprinting. But when you were plating and sprinting in Warzone 1, you were moving slower than sprinting without plating by a lot, but it was still faster than walking and plating. So there, it was still the fastest way to move your character while plating, but it's not like you were knife sprinting speed or even your current weapon sprinting speed. It's the slowest way to sprint in Warzone 1, but it's still faster than walking and plating. They need to add this to, to Warzone 2. I shouldn't be able to sprint with my Vaznev out and be moving at that speed while plating. While plating, no. But it should be faster than what we have now, which is literally only being able to walk and plate. It's absurd. And it does ruin a huge skill gap. Because now it's just like, oh, it's not even an option to try and plate right now. I'm, I'm dead yeah. if I do. I, I have yeah. to just, like, run. And combined, again, with the insanely fast TTK, this means that if someone sees you first, you are so severely disadvantaged because now you can't mm. even plate while running away. You're just fucked. Yep. It's really bad. Yeah. This needs to be changed. And this is something like everyone agrees on, by the way. Uh, I, I've never seen anyone say, oh, I'm glad you can't sprint and plate anymore. That was overpowered. No one has yeah, that take. Yeah, no, no. And no one should have that take. Whether you're casual yeah. or skilled, I think you would want this back. So hopefully yep. they do it. They won't, but hopefully they do. Yeah, and then I'll just say this while we're here. I'd put this down further, but yeah, just overall zero outplay potential in so many scenarios. Because if you get shot, 
out in the open, if there's no cover, there is nothing you can do because you can't sprint away in plate. You can't stim. Uh, you just can't Sorry. do anything. You know, it, it's like the, the fast time to kill fast time to kill combined with no movement or ability to plate while trying to get away insta death. If you're out in the open insta, there's nothing you can do. Zero outplay potential whatsoever. You're just dead. And this happened to us yesterday in one game. We were in the open, got shot at. We all were just dead. Nothing we could do. Yeah. Could you say, you know, maybe we went, uh, we chose a, a poor path or something or should have taken a vehicle? Sure, maybe. But every single person is going to be in a situation like that literally every single game. And the fact that there's n almost nothing you can do about it if there's no cover around and you're just screwed, like that really sucks. That's not fun at all. Yeah, there yeah, there needs to be it needs to be the case. And I I like to use this example a lot because it illustrates my point perfectly. If Nate Gibson is running past me in Warzone and he doesn't see me, I'm killing him 100 out of 100 times. And that shouldn't be true. Um if I get the jump on Nate Gibson in Warzone, I shouldn't be allowed to kill him. He's too much. The skill gap there between Nate Gibson and me is so vast that I shouldn't ever be able to kill him if we're both full health. It shouldn't be allowed. Like, it shouldn't be possible for me to do that. Um, so the fact that he is so much better than me, but if I see him first, I just win automatically. The fact that that's possible is ridiculous. And I always go back to BO4 as an example. If I shoot Nate Gibson first in BO4 and we're both full health and like he doesn't see me and I start shooting him, he's still going to kill me every time because he's that much better than me. That's how it should be. You, if you're a better player, the fact that you didn't see him first shouldn't cause you to automatically die. If you're that much better, you should have a chance of killing them. And right now you just don't in Warzone. I can't plate while sprinting. I can't stim out, stim my way out of it. Um, I can't turn on him and start shooting at him with my superior aim and killing him because the TTK is too fast. There really is nothing you can do. The only skill gap here is, yeah, getting to a position where this isn't going to happen to you. But oftentimes, that is not possible. No. Uh, you know, and... You could say like, oh, well, you should have known the guy was there. It's like, okay, well, I can all the UAVs were sold out at every buy I went to. What do you want me to do? Yeah, exactly. And heartbeat sensors don't work. Like, what do you want me to do? Uh, like, I, I can't, I can't do, it's not possible to do that. So yeah, there, there is a, there are a, there are far too many situations where the, the more skilled player is not winning the gunfight and i think the more skilled player even in a br should win the gunfight 70 percent of the time there should be times where the more skilled player doesn't win that's gonna happen in a br and i'm okay with that sometimes you get super unlucky and you get fucked by people worse than you and that's okay i think sometimes in a br but it shouldn't be an actual coin toss for a lot of gunfights, which right now it is. A lot of the times, who wins a gunfight? Who saw the other person first? That is yeah. most of the time who wins. And it shouldn't be, that shouldn't be the case. There should be more outplay potential than there currently is. Yeah. For sure. Yep. Um, next thing, just like multiplayer, we've already talked about this, but I want to touch on it again. There's a delay to everything. Uh, switch guns, there's a delay to fire. Trying to play... Plate, there's a delay until the animation starts and then after the animation. Uh, climbing over a wall, delay to pull up your gun after hitting the ground. Just same thing multiplayer has, again, comes into Warzone and makes it feel even worse. Just delays on delays everywhere. In addition to that, which I agree with, there was one feature, there is one feature that works as follows in every first person shooter game I've ever played until now. And this is the feature I have. I'm holding a gun. I switch guns. There's an animation while I'm switching guns and there's a delay while I'm switching guns. So I can't instantly fire my second gun. That's fine. I would expect that. 
Obviously, I shouldn't be able to switch guns and literally immediately be able to fire. That's okay. But what I can do in every first-person shooter game I've ever played, again, with uh, until now, I would press switch guns, and while the animation is happening, I'm holding down my trigger. And what I'm conveying to the game is, as soon as my gun is out and I'm able to fire, I want bullets to be coming out of it. And in every first-person shooter game I've ever played, ever, until now, that's been the case. So this happened to me, however, until now. This happened to me in Warzone 2. I have my RPK out. I'm shooting at some guy. He's closing the distance. He's weak. I don't want to reload. I don't have time. I switch to my Vaznev 9K. I press weapon swap. I hold down my right trigger. Um, and I hold down ADS. I can't ADS yet because the gun's not out. But once the gun is actually out, I do ADS. So I can pre-ADS in this way. That's good. But bullets just are not coming out of my gun. They're still not coming. <laughs> they don't and they're come, still huh? not coming. And then I finally figure out, okay, I guess I have to try again. I try firing again and it works. And then I die, by the way. I died. And I of wouldn't course. have died if this worked like every first-person shooter game I've ever played except this one. Why is that feature not in the game? I don't know if this is a bug or if it's intentional, but when I press weapon swap or when I finish a plate or when I land on the ground or when I finish a mantle, don't make me guess when my gun's fireable and constantly have to fucking press the button like an ape to, to see when my gun is fireable. Let me hold down the trigger so that as soon as I'm able to fire, bullets come out of my gun. This is unacceptable and super dog shit. It's super dog shit, and you're not going to notice it until it happens to you. It will happen to you, and you'll probably die because of it. Uh, yeah. This is unacceptable and just bizarre and not playtested. Because if someone playtested the game, they would die to this, and they'd say, oh, let's make sure we fix that. And well, make it have you watched like any of them before. play? They don't. They're not good, so they don't real they don't notice things like this. They're all fucking that's, terrible, actually. That's very likely to be the case. Yeah. I watched uh, the one of the leads of Raven. I think it's actually Ted's boss even. Posted a clip of him getting his first Warzone Ted 2 win. Ted's a boss, really. Well, a Raven boss. I didn't know that. Or it's something he's like I think on he's Ted's a lead level. Dev, so yeah, he's not like studio. This guy head, is right? like playing on a console with like motion blur on. I just oh my god. They don't even, it's like, no wonder they design and make these changes. They don't play the same game as everyone else, man. I can't believe it. Yeah, they don't. God, and the lobby was so bad. Oh my God. Like, people are all crouching in corners, looking the wrong direction. Jesus Christ. Which is also why the devs love skill-based matchmaking, because they're all dog shit. Correct. So they don't notice these things. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that's, that's of course, true. But it's, it, it's super fucking annoying. Uh, I, I couldn't believe it happened. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Because it's so intuitive that it would work that way. And and like in real life, if I switch guns, I'm going to know when I can fire the gun because my finger will be on the trigger by then. So it's not like it's unrealistic to let me pre-fire as a video game player. Because in real life, you're going to be able to fire as soon as you can. Like, it's, yep. so, it's just so dumb. I hate them. I hate yeah. them. But anyway, yeah. Uh, all right, these next things here, a lot of these are minor that I think will get changed, the but next regardless. One is not minor. Precision airstrikes are directly on the center of my fucking screen. They're in the middle of the screen once again, so that'll be that way for the next year or so. This is just all kill streaks. So if someone calls a precision, a mortar, strike, if there's any notification that I want to know, but it doesn't need to be in the center of my screen, it's of course in the, it's literally the direct center of my screen. And when I get precision, the worst thing about that is not that there's going to be an explosion overhead soon that could kill me. The worst thing about it is that I won't be able to aim for the next two seconds while this is happening. Um, I've died to this as well. I died to this uh, on day one, actually. We were in Almazra City. We were by a bridge. I was aiming at a guy that I just saw go behind a planter, and I knew he was fucked because I was going to strafe left and he was going to stay there and then be in my sights. Or he was going to move and be in my sights. And then he calls a precision airstrike on me. And then moves. And he's completely obscured by the banner. How? How? 
how it makes me <laughs> so fucking mad because this is such a simple thing to not fuck up you code in where the logo goes put it literally anywhere else literally yeah. anywhere else and it's better than it is now it's literally on my reticle it is the most insane thing that could happen it's designed to be in the worst possible spot i can't i just can't believe it it's so unbelievable to me and then like and this will never be fixed again how do how does this get play tested and not one guy think oh that's kind of an annoying spot let's move this up like a, an inch on the screen literally just anywhere else Christ. how does like yeah this this is why i don't think play testing is real <laughs> yeah play testing is a it's fucking not a real thing yeah. yeah black helicopter there's it's not no a real play thing testers. yeah it's so fucking gross yeah it's so annoying. um god i hate it yeah so that's fun and exciting it actually so, gets you killed it's gotten me killed it got me killed on day one, literally. Not the precision itself, but me not being able to see the guy I was going to fucking kill. It's yep. so dumb. It's so dumb and unacceptable. Because it's so easy to not put it in the wrong spot. And they just do it anyway. Because Activision yep. devs do not play their own game. I, it's so gross. Fuck them. Yeah, cocksuckers. Um, uh, oh, next annoying thing here. Uh, not too worried. The bomb drone is... <laughs> very overpowered if you see a it's bomb insane, drone yeah. pick all of them up put them in your backpack you don't need ammo for a gun you have a bomb drone the radius is insane raz got a literal triple kill the, our second warzone 2 game first ever when ever we were on it. stream literal first time i picked it up kill. triple kill we didn't even know it was busted at that point he just wanted to try it and you got a triple kill with it uh they're insane so use them abuse them they'll be probably broken for a couple weeks because I'm sure they're all, you know, patting themselves on the back and they're off for Thanksgiving next week or um what do they call it since we're not doing Thanksgiving anymore cuz that's like racist or something. Um, what is the new thing people do for Thanksgiving? They changed Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day. I don't know if or what they changed Thanksgiving to. Maybe I'm it's just sure they, they always say, okay, yeah, something's been changed, but they're all going to pat themselves on the back when you know, when they're eating their little their their vegan tofurkey or whatever, whatever on the, the Thanksgiving. Yeah. They're gonna be real proud telling their family about their game. And then they're gonna uh, so, tweet so on bomb their drones won't be fixed. about how virtuous they are that was made yeah. at a, a fucking slave facility called Foxconn with yeah. lithium batteries mined by child slaves in sub Saharan Africa. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna say, Oh, I'm such a good person. Fuck you. Yeah. So, so that's why the bomb drones are going to be OP for at least a few weeks because they're all doing that. They're eating the, their tofurkey. Uh, Cluster Mine's also really good. It's broken in multiplayer for it's it's a kill streak in multiplayer. Throw it on the ground. Someone runs in the building. There's nothing they can do. They it, it pops up. It's like a bouncing Betty kind of goes off, damages them. Uh, oh, but they can like run away and get out of it, right? Wrong. They basically can't move once you get hit. The second one hits, you're dead, you're down. Yeah. Broken OP. That doesn't matter as much because someone has to push you for it to happen. But it's like, why are we even putting bomb drones and cluster mines in the game? So smile, that'll be in the game forever. They will never remove those. Dead silence is in the game, as I said. Doesn't matter because footstep audio doesn't exist anyways, and it doesn't work. You pop it upgrade. and it just goes away. But pretty much much, there are a bunch of field upgrades and streaks that are in the game like that that shouldn't be and yeah. those are some of them yeah uh, another fun little quality of life change raven made last year they made an excellent change to the parachutes in warzone you can pull the chute at any distance so you jump off a ledge uh there's a rock a foot and a half below you doesn't matter you can still pull your chute if you want well that's all been reverted of course back to like og warzone there are so many ledges you jump off that you should be able to pull your chute you can't will they ever fix this no because infinity ward we'll be dealing with this for another year yeah um yeah that's that's true and very annoying yeah it's yeah it's all so yeah uh, you're right yeah. I have nothing. Um, next thing here, the three plate vest. I don't like it. Either give everyone two plates or give everyone three plates. Yep. Why do we I have to find one? Yep. Why do I have to? F it. This also leads to why people feel like the uh, the time to kill is really fast. If you get a ground loop vector early on and shoot someone close up with two plates, boy, they're fucking dead immediately. Immediately, absolutely, there true. should not be vests that provide different amounts of armor. Everyone should spawn with a three. If anything, add a rare vest in that's like tempered and gives you two plates that 
are worth more each, so you only have to plate up twice and use less plates. If you want to add something in, add that. Don't add it so there's a literal different time to kill between That's if someone's wearing idea. a fully plated two plate vest or a three plate vest horrible dog shit rng get it out of here don't want it get Dude, it out that's a beautiful idea that they could actually do that and would they won't help ever the game, do yeah. which is why they'll never do it but here's the idea everyone by default has three plate slots right and then if you find the armor vest which is already in the game it's just two chunky plates instead of three normal plates that provides you the equivalent amount of protection two chunkers yeah that would make the plate vest still really good and worth having but you have the same amount of health as a normal ass plate carrier which is why they'll never do it but that would be a great change yeah that would that would help the game tremendously it would be excellent so it'll never happen that's yeah because yeah. then you have to spend less time plating it would speed up the pace of the game once you find the vest but you're still not disadvantaged by having literally less health if you happen to not have found a vest yet. By the way, reminder, we told you guys this before anyone had played the game, when as soon as we heard about the armor vest, uh, oh, yeah, this sure is did. a dog shit idea. Why are we having inconsistent health values? This is really yeah. dumb. Where RNG, people have more kill. health because of RNG and they happen to find the loot. That's really fucking stupid and is going to make an unfun gaming experience. <laughs> We're here to tell you, guess what? Because we have two brain cells to rub together and we thought just one fucking time we were right, of course it's bad. Duh. Duh. Not surprising. Duh. It's stupid. B remove it. Yeah. Obviously. Yep. So, anyway. Yeah. I hate them. Um, what's the next thing here? We kind of already talked about this. Free loadout. It needs to come earlier or there needs to be two of them. We need to get one like in the second circle and fourth or fifth circle. Yeah. Or we need to get one early and one when it is now. I don't know, but it takes way too long to get your perks unless you clear a stronghold. I think we need to go back to just two free loadies. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, in addition to the simplified looting system, what was the other thing that made Warzone so popular compared to all the other BRs? What did it have that all the B other BRs didn't have? Is the customizable, personalized loadout equipment that you could use every game you could use your gun with your camo and your fucking stickers and your attachments and this was really helpful for content creators and players of the game themselves and this massively set wars on apart from every other br now we are throttling that significantly by only having one loadout instead of two so there are fewer opportunities to get it and it comes way later, so a lot of you dog shit kids are just dead before you ever get a loadout. Or you've crashed, yeah. Your or you've crashed. crashed by that. How many people love Warzone because they get to use their own guns with their own setups who have played five matches in a row without having even gotten it? And they're thinking, boy, this feels like a real dog shit BR that's exactly <laughs> the same as PUBG because there are effectively no loadouts in this game for me. I might as well go play Apex, because at least it's less buggy. Well, maybe. Maybe. Whatever. Yeah. I don't know more anything about Apex. Buggy, I'm just assuming it's less buggy, because how could a game be more buggy than this? So, how could a game be know. more buggy than this? Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I don't know if there should be two, or if the, first, the free one needs to just come sooner. I would ultimately prefer two, but then like you said, that would... That would make Strongholds less impactful. And Infinity Ward spent real hard, spent a lot of time, and they tried really hard on those, and they don't oh, want to make them irrelevant. Some dev worked on AI-specific actions and movement for literally the last three years. So, yeah, they're not removing AI from Warzone ever. And they're not, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know if we're ever going to get two loadies, free loadies. I suspect we won't. I think the best we can hope for is that the the one free loadout we get comes sooner. Um, but even that, yeah. man, I don't know. I don't know. Drop how it sooner and have it stay through the whole game. Have it stay through the whole match. You know, since it, it already works, so anyone can grab them. Drop them in random places. Some of them will be in, in yes. the zone later yeah. on. Some of them won't be, and just leave them all on the map. Yeah. Yeah. Because then there'd still be a risk. Because it would still get riskier as the game went on to go hit it. 
Oh, exactly. Yeah. Because the zone is smaller and everyone's mm-hmm. always going to want to hit it. Yeah, that would be better, which is why, again, they won't do it. So, yeah. Uh, next thing, the map needs more money. Uh, all of the money is in the cash registers and almost nowhere else. And why are there $100 stacks? Just take them out. Have <laughs> yeah. everything be at, have the minimum stack be 500. I don't ever want to pick up a hundred dollars. Why, why are we doing this, man? Jesus Christ. Uh, so we need a lot, a lot, a lot more money on the map. A lot more money. There's one building that has money and it's next to high rise and it has a bunch of cash registers. There's you, your pro tip. You say that, but like, what? <laughs> There's nothing to spend your money on. I'll go to a well, buy station. Get, get with, your guns. Buy yeah. your guns. 5K. Buy people back. I'll buy my gun. This has happened a lot. I'll buy my gun. I'll buy another gun. I'll continue playing the game. I'll have $40,000. I'll go to a buy. UAVs are sold out. Okay. Well, I guess I don't... Okay, I'm going to leave now. I, I can't invest that money. Make more things viable. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I kind of agree with you. There is not... I, I don't know how the... Yeah. I'm just... It feels like there isn't enough money, but it also feels like I always have $20,000 on me because there's nothing to spend it on also. I don't know what's going on here, but I don't like it. I can say that. I don't like it. Don't like I think it, they huh? need to remove the UAV restrictions also. Let There should be infinite UAVs. Sorry. There just need to be infinite UAVs. It's dumb that and I we have still- 20000 on me and there's literally nothing I want to buy at a buy station. I already have a self res there everywhere. I guess I could be buying more self reses and putting them in my backpack. I've never seen one at a buy station though. That was oh, stock. Maybe they're, oh yeah, maybe those are sold out too. Yeah. I haven't yeah. spent a huge significant amount of time like really paying attention. So maybe I'm just yeah. being a dumbass, but still, I don't know. I, let us buy infinite UAVs. That'll speed up the mid game. Or limit them, but have the limit be like five or seven at a buy station or or 10 i don't know because there will be sweaty teams that go and buy four of them at a buy station and hold them so even like doing 10 or something i don't know but it's just yeah people keep saying it's one max per buy station it definitely isn't because we've seen news yeah we've seen as many as like three at a buy station and then something else something different happens when there is a um fire sale because like for you, it said there were three or something and then you bought them and then I went to the buy station and there were still some in stock. So I think during a fire sale, it restocks everything maybe and limits who wh- whatever person is buying them at that time only. I don't know. It's weird. So we don't really know how that works, but yeah, here's regardless, another con. there's make never the, UAVs. Yeah. Here's another con, by the way. Make that whole system make sense. Explain it to me once. There's another con. I don't know how buy stations work, because you're right. There was a fire sale, and I think I remember there were three UAVs, and then there was a separate slot that had one UAV also. So it wasn't a one stack of four UAVs. Oh. It was a stack of three and then a separate stack of one. Make That's that funny. make sense. That would be nice, yeah, if that made sense. Or if it was one stack of four, also make that make sense. What so explain it to me, write a blog post. How do buy station quantities work? Because I don't know how they work. Um, sometimes there's no UAV. Sometimes there's one. Sometimes there are more than one. Is it random? If so, that's probably fine, although change it. But at least tell me that they're random so that I understand what's going on. Because if there were always every buy had three and the times I've run up to a buy and there's only one, that means two have been bought. That would be nice to know, but I just don't know if that's true right now because they've never told us. So explain something better. So explain something at all once, actually. that's There's another fucking con for Warzone 2 is I don't know how the buy station functions because <laughs> yeah, I haven't no, been told works. how it functions. So tell me how it functions. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, not being able to set up our own perk package. So we have perks in the game, but it's like, I have to choose from your and they dog just didn't shit tell packages. Us they were going to do this, by the way. Yeah, why? The surprise. You I, can't this, pick your own I think, we'll Super be able lunch. to pick our own perks. I think this will be changed relatively soon. Um, because there, there is a bug right the now. on launch, though? There is a bug right now where people are able to, they've been able to make their own perk packages. So something is in there in some sense. Maybe it's a bug that it's not in there right now, or it's just 
they put it in this way and we're going to see how people liked it. I don't know. Uh, but it's like every single one of your perk packages is dog shit. Correct. Not not any perk package has the four perks I would ever want to run. Correct. So let me just pick my own. Uh, I play the game and know it better than you who who works on the game. So let me choose my own perks, please. Because uh, if they're in the game, then let me just choose mine, right? I don't want to select your awful, terrible packages ever. Yep. And fuck whoever designed those packages. There's no synergy with the perk packages. There's no rhyme or reason. It is a it is a random collection of four perks, and then they will name the perk package after whatever the ultimate perk is, which, by the way, doesn't work. So that's cool. You name this Spectre because the ultimate perk is Ghost, but also Ghost doesn't work, so it's not a Spectre class at all. It's a random class perk <laughs> package. I will choose for the first two perks because those are the only ones that seem to be working right now, at least consistently. And also, even if they were working, the they don't make sense. And I would never use any of those perk packages. Yeah. Why did they take this? Why did they... With no... They didn't tell us. that we, le we all learned that you couldn't pick your own perks when the game launched and we fucking went to make a class. What... Why did you do that? And also, why did we not... Why were we not told that that was going to be the case? And why were we not told why that was going to be the case? No one knows, because Infinity Ward is allergic to telling the their consumers anything. Um, yep. They can't do it with patch notes. They can't do it with dog shit awful decisions they make, like not being able to edit our perks suddenly, even though at the event... Not five days prior, people ostensibly were able to change their own perks. No reason. It just because. Cool. Yep. I hate them. <laughs> yeah, I literally, yeah, I literally God, hate I them. Can't stand them. I'm, I'm back on the iDev hate train fully again. I gave them a little bit of grace, uh, gave them some leeway, see how you know things went, and I'm back. I'm absolutely back on the hate train. Fuck Infinity War. And they're yeah. doing all the same awful things that we hated about them that they used to do. That they said they learned from, right? Yep. Yeah, you sure learn. You're not yeah. going to learn anything if Joe Seacott is still in charge there. I mean, nothing's absolutely going to change, true. obviously. It starts Fuck at Pat the top. Kelly. Joe Seacott, Pat pod. Kelly need to go. Both all of them need to go. All my homies hate Pat Kelly. All my homies hate Joe Seacott. Oh, God. Fuck both Fuck. of you, pigs. Spit gif. Spit yeah. gif. God, I hate him, man. Tell us uh, the next thing here. once, dude. God. <laughs> they're so shit. They can't one, patch notes. One time hey, would be kind of ideal. Close range damage reduction, sick patch note. What the fuck does that even mean, dude? God, they're so bad. I hate I hate them so much. Yeah. They're There's, not good people. They're 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 not even not even that they're not good at their job. They're not good humans, they're I don't think. They're morally wrong. Yes, they're yeah, they're, they're, immoral they're not good people. humans. That's correct. Yes, they're immoral. Yeah. If I ever meet Joe Sega, I'm gonna spit on my hand before I shake his hand. That's what I'm gonna do, just yeah. so he gets my slobber all over his Good. little hand. God, Good. he's a cocksucker. Next thing here, this is growing on me a little bit. The two v two gulag, though. What, why are we doing the two v two? Having to yeah. wait for four players late game, like you called, absolutely a thing. Uh, you sit there forever, and then you just get out because I can't find four people. So why are yeah. we doing it? At, it, either change it so at a certain point it just swaps to a 1v1 or yeah, something like circle or, something, or just yeah. make it 1v1 <clears throat> the whole time i don't know terrible th third. unthought out design that was certainly plays acid by the way uh also not once have i ever seen anyone try to kill the jailer and why would you why would any four people team up to kill the jailer yeah, when he spawns so late that i'm already dead and my teammate is already dead or we've killed the other team by that point yeah God By the way, damn. I have a Glock I can't with believe one someone clip spent time working on and that. And he spawns with eight plates. Oh, I and there's no ammo him. on the ground. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I couldn't, even if I wanted to do this, which I, of course, don't. I have not seen once ever someone even shoot at the jailer. All you do is run away from him. It's just, this is classic. I haven't looked at him because I hear a minigun and I run away. Is he a juggernaut or is he just, what does he look like? Yeah, I made that up. I don't know. He probably is, though. He probably has a ton So of how health. would you ever possibly kill him? Yeah. literally there's not enough there are not enough items in there to kill him i don't you think have to even with four guys and stick him while he's fucking your ass with a minigun and you have no plates yeah it's absurd um this is this is just a classic activision move where they spend all this time they spend all this ink 
on fucking blogs jerking themselves off about what a cool thing they did and it's a mechanic no one wanted and no one will use this is exactly the jailer right they designed this mechanic they designed this character they designed this whole scheme around oh wouldn't it be cool if we let players team up and kill some npc to get out of the gulag let's spend an inordinate amount of time and resources developing this and no one uses it because activision devs don't play their own game they don't know what players want and they come up with all of these cockamamie dog shit ideas that are cute on paper until you use your brain once or you've played one game of warzone and you realize oh maybe in theory in some other game or in a fucking fanfic a comic book this would be cute but in actual practice in a game no of course we're not doing this this is way too dumb and crazy yeah. and something no one's gonna use they do it and all the time they do it all the time this is just the latest installation it's so dumb and there is a exactly zero percent chance for devs supposedly play testing this game ever once teamed up and beat the jailer they Absolutely got their true. asses reamed by the jailer yeah they never Absolutely. beat them you know why are we doing this why it's, are we why are we adding these ridiculous things it's so dumb they give people what they didn't ask for and don't want and don't use when it comes because they think they know better than the player base what the player base wants they're always wrong in that case and when they're doing that, they are also simultaneously neglecting to give the player base what they are begging for for fucking years, dude. That's just classic Activision. I they're they're so arrogant. They're so arrogant. Spit gif. God, I want to spit on all their faces. I hate them. I yeah, I want to yeah. Yeah. That's um, as much as we can say on YouTube. So we'll yeah. Yeah. We can say more on Patreon. Maybe next week we'll get Patreon some more real thoughts. Maybe about. maybe the behind the scenes episode. Yeah. yeah. That's where it's at. Yeah. We'll do a vlog. Um, we'll drive to Anaheim. Oh, God. Or spit on their front door. Yeah. Flip this them off. This is a joke, by away. the way. We're not going to go assault. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Just spitting on their window. I'm not hurting anyone. Well, let's move on. I didn't say I was going to spit on a person. Uh, last couple things here. I just. Boy, golly. I can't believe this. Okay, before I start, if anyone here has ever worked game dev or knows a goddamn thing, literally please DM us and let us know why. Why on earth are Call of Duty games the only games, zero exaggeration, the only games in my life I have ever literally played that makes you download an update, you launch the game, and it makes you restart the game again because of the update. Why is this still happening? Yeah. Why are we still getting update requires restart? It's 2022, almost 2023. Someone please tell us why they do this. From their point of view, why this makes sense for them. Not in my fucking life. I've played PC video games since 2005, 2006 probably. Never in my fucking life have I played a game that makes you download an update, launch it, and then restart it to put the update in the game. What does this mean? Why are we still doing this? It's especially annoying when they're putting out fucking eight hot fixes a day. Every single time yeah. my game crashes, right. I then have to restart the game and then restart it again. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I can't believe a world exists where Activision, a AAA studio, I'm in a game. We get an update. It says, oh, restart your game. There's an update. I spend minutes downloading the update. I launch the game and it tells me this update requires a restart. <laughs> yeah. God fucking so damn crazy. it. God fucking damn it, man. There's no shot they can't figure out a way around this. Holy, a triple-A studio. Why are the biggest studios the worst studios at developing video games? And the last thing here, which is very... This is a big issue right now with how many times people are crashing. Warzone 2.0 going into the year 2023 and Call of Duty, an Activision video game, an Activision AAA studio, thousands of developers working on this game. How? How do we not have a reconnect feature in DMZ and Warzone? How can my game crash because you're incompetent dog shit, dog shit developers? How on earth can we still not have a reconnect feature, man? Why? Especially I, I in just DMZ. don't. 
I do, especially in DMZ, I don't understand this. Tarkov is an extraction shooter with like literally less than 100 developers and they've had a reconnect feature in the game for years. Apex Legends, I believe, has a reconnect feature. How can a Call of Duty studio, Call of Duty studio not put something like this in a game? Because the, the crashing issues literally wouldn't matter as much if you could reconnect. It's the fact that you crash mid-game and cannot reconnect and play with your friends, and you have to wait 15 minutes just to then crash again five minutes into the next game. God fucking damn it. Why are we not figuring these things out? And it's just like, I don't get why we keep just giving them a pass when they launch these games that are not full. You should shit talk them, and they should be held accountable for giving us a game and launching a game that was clearly not ready. Someone needs to take accountability for this. Well, Warzone's free, but even when it comes to Warzone, yeah. even when it comes to MW2, True. why are we launching games that don't work? True. Like They need to bring back real beta testing instead of giving us a, a beta, which isn't a beta, and it's a full game that they're gonna, about to release no matter what. Why do we not have like proper beta testing again? But give us beta servers. Launch you should have launched the Warzone 2 beta like literally three months ago for one weekend. Let people play test Friday through Sunday. Take it offline. Fix a bunch of issues. Three weeks later, say, all right, we have another beta weekend. Put it live. Why can we not do things like this? Why is it only the small studios that ever do shit like this, man? I don't understand it. Fuck Activision and all of these devs for launching another game that doesn't work. Uh, and I'll end with this real quick. This is what I tweeted out yesterday. So it's it's so obvious Activision forces these games or th the studios to push the games no matter what state they're in. Uh, Warzone 2 had no business being released this year. It's a buggy disaster. We should not have seen this game for at minimum three months. It's clearly it's not ready. That being said, we've done a lot of complaining today. The core is definitely there and this will be a really solid BR, but we're not going to be at that point for like literally months. We said it in Caldera and we called it. Caldera wasn't playable until... February, March, and that's when it became playable. We're looking at the same thing here. Warzone 2 will not be in a mostly finished, fun, working, balanced state until March or April of 2023. That's just where we're at. It's going to take a long time. Thousands of bugs, hundreds of bugs, balancing issues, everything else on top of it. And then Them adding in new content, which is then going to bring in other bugs. We're yeah. not looking at a solid working battle royale for three, four, five months at the least. It's the core is there, but holy fuck, do we need a lot of changes, man? A lot of minor changes. Yeah. And this will be a really good game. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and there, and it's annoying too, because there are a lot of like little bugs that are going to require a good solid amount of dev time to fix. And then on top of that, there are things that are not bugs that are just insane that they will end up changing that also need to be changed. So features that were intended that need to be changed and will be changed on top of all the bugs they need to fix. We're, we've got a ways to go. Absolutely. Um, the reconnect thing, especially. Yeah. Many, many, many games have a reconnect feature and it is inexcusable that any possible quality of life feature that any game ever has implemented into their game, Warzone 2 has no excuse to not have it. Because if any game development studio on Earth, or publisher on Earth, has the resources to do a quality of life feature, it is Activision. They absolutely could have a reconnect feature. They choose not to. It's not important enough to them. If you're going to be running tournaments... If you know your community is going to be running tournaments, if you're going to be running Fortune's Keep $100,000 tournaments, if you're going to have everybody crashing at least once every two hours, with some people crashing every game, how is it possible you're going to not put in a reconnect feature when we all know it is doable? Games have reconnect features. You could make it happen. You don't, it's not like you're lacking the resources. You're just lacking the motivation. You don't want to. This is unacceptable. We're not asking for something impossible. We're not even asking for something that hasn't been done before. It has been done before. And with how Certainly, many people yeah. are crashing and how as often as they are, there's no reason not to have a reconnect feature. And this is going to be even worse when tournaments start happening. And if they do like a Warzone League 
or whatever, like a Call of Duty League without a reconnect feature, this is going to be insane. And it's what's going to happen. Aiden's going to crash once again on the cusp of winning $5 million, and then he's going to win no money, and it's going to be Activision's fault because he's going to crash and be unable to reconnect when they could have done that from day one, but they chose not to. The update requires restart thing, by the way. This is just a perfect example of just an, a dumb Activision quirk that makes no fucking sense. Yeah, it no, like no, that's what I'm confused about. Is no other video game I've ever played has this. That's why I don't understand why we have this still. It's so weird to me. Exactly. It's it's not possible that they have to have that in. It's not possible that Activision can't patch the game without update requires restart. There's no, yeah. there's no chance. I don't accept that. I don't accept that. So if some Activision dev is like, hey, sorry, update requires restart happens because the binary into the fucking proximity uh, you know, proxy server and the way the crossplay works, wrong, don't accept. I don't accept it. I don't care what you would tell me. I don't accept that you have to do this to apply an update. I don't accept it. No other game ever has done has made you do that. I don't accept that you couldn't figure out a way to update the game without update requires restart. It's not that big of a deal. I will grant that. But it's just, again, it is emblematic of how dog shit Activision is. It's just a, a shitty quality of life feature, lack thereof, that is just dumb. And if they cared enough, if they wanted to, they would fix it. They just don't want to. It's stupid. Anyway, overall, Warzone 2, I still have been having a lot of fun. I have not been crashing as... No, we haven't been, yeah. ...nearly as often as the majority of players have been. And this Almost episode would be all. a lot different if we were. Uh, if you think we're being negative now, boy. Uh, if we were crashing as much as the Tanner Cold War incident, it would, this would be a different episode. Um, and that's how it is for a lot of people that bad. But that is how it is for a lot of people. That really sucks for them. But despite that, uh, overall, I am having a lot of fun. And another thing that I should have added to the good, but I think this is a good place to say it. Warzone two feels a lot different than Warzone one. And I'm glad it does. I'm yeah, happy agreed. about that. We wanted a different game. We got a different game. It does feel like Warzone still. There is enough there from Warzone 1 where it feels like I'm playing Warzone, uh, Warzone ultimately. But it also feels very different, and I'm glad. I wanted a different game. I wanted a different experience, and I got that. So I'm very excited to see how Warzone 2 progresses. And like Tanner said, in March, in April... I think it's going to be a lot of fun and I'm, I'm excited to see what, yeah. where we land ultimately, where things yeah, kind of settle. Yeah. Once we get balance and all that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I am having a lot of fun right now. It's just like the amount of issues is crazy. And the, it, when those issues are still around in three weeks and I'm still having the same amount of fun, that's when they're going to be even more frustrating. But Prox Chat is great. It's making for some fun, fun games and experiences and gunfights. Uh, it's fun not having every single person be the best Warzone player I've ever seen in my life, too. That's kind of nice. Uh, I don't know if that's because the game has no skill gap or if it's just because skill based matchmaking isn't working very well or I don't, I don't know what it is, but. Um, the lobbies have been fun. The game is fun, but it's just the game shouldn't have launched yet. There are way too many minor issues that are just annoying to have to constantly deal with for a massive game studio that business is designing and launching video games. But it'll be really good. Uh, I think it has the potential to be the best Warzone experience we've had. The map and everything, the gameplay. If they keep the guns like harder to use like this too, and I'm not getting beamed across map anymore, that's making the game a lot more fun. But still, like it just needs to be sped up. And a lot of that will be fixed when everyone's not crashing. Uh, maybe a few loadout changes, some movement changes. Just speeding up the game a small amount would do so much to make this a more fun experience. Because you do have some of those games where you're like, God, I'm kind of bored. Just nothing's going on, can't find anyone. I'm bored, can't get a UAV, I don't know what to do. So when you experience that, you know, just a lot of running around and doing nothing, it sucks. But the core is there, and I think it will be a really good game in time. Not right now, though. Yeah, and that's actually... 
a good thing uh, because ultimately the most important part of a game is the core, the skeleton, and the skeleton is there. The core is there. Uh, if our first impressions were that the core of this game is bad, that would mean that the game is unsalvageable. So luckily that is not the case. I feel like the core is there. The skeleton is there. They could make some changes, some small, some less small, that would be conducive to a way better, more fun experience that hopefully they will do some of. And if they do, I think this does have the potential, I agree, to be even more fun and even better than Warzone 1 was. Because the map is better, I think, um, and it's a newer game, and there are there are a lot of upsides to to where this can go. And I think the vehicle behavior, another thing I should have said in the good, I like the tire blowing out shit and all that. It hasn't become super relevant to me yet, but it will as people get more used to wanting to play quickly, using vehicles more often. I think the uni the, the vehicle system now is going to be uh, a big improvement over Warzone 1. Um, here's another good thing. Haven't seen anyone cheating in Warzone 2 yet. Not once. Uh, that's really good. Uh, at least not that I've noticed. So... There's another improvement from Warzone 1, is Warzone 1, there were cheaters every fucking day. Haven't noticed it yet, at least, in Warzone 2. So if there are cheaters, they're way less obvious and blatant than they were in Warzone 1. Um, and SMG's not having insane range. I think a lot of things about Warzone 2 are a, a significant improvement from Warzone 1. Certainly an improvement from the Caldera era of Warzone 1, especially post-Season 3. Um, that game was a joke. Uh, there are no redeploy extraction tokens. There are no... Um, oh my god, what's the other thing? There are the two fucking uh, redeploy tokens. None of those. Um, there's, tokens, there's no tokens. fucking event every single goddamn game. There's no... Your teammates get bought back instantly, infinitely. There's not... 500 precision airstrikes being called on me every single moment that I'm playing the game. A lot of things about Warzone 2 are a significant improvement from Warzone 1 Caldera. And if this game never changed, it would still be better than Season 6 of Caldera. Because that game wasn't even a BR. <laughs> yeah. A and there yeah, are no TDM planes. On Caldera. There are no planes dropping fucking bombs on me while I'm trying to get a loadout. That makes this already infinitely better than Warzone 1. So don't get me wrong. There are problems, but I'm I'm very happy to be here and not in the the labyrinth of Ted Timmons's mind where he thought whatever the fuck he did was a good idea to Warzone. We have come to a better spot now. But we could reach even greater heights, and that's what we're optimistic about. Yeah. Agreed. With that said, that is it. Patreon.com slash the drop shot. Five bonus eps a month. We do uh early access episodes, ad free episodes, we do monthly hangouts. If you wanted more content, and if you wanted the current content without ads and sooner, or if you just want to support the show, patreon.com slash the drop shot. One word is the best way for you to do so. You can go to thedropshot.com, find links to the Patreon and everything else there. We got the YouTube, the Discord, the Twitter. Keep your eyes on the Twitter and the Discord for our schedule for next week. Uh, we'll post when we're streaming, when we're gaming, if we're doing any other crazy events um, there. So that is it. Thank you all for watching and listening. Have an excellent evening and stay humble. Stay humble.